Welcome along to Mallory Park where we are just about to start seeing some of the action from Quick 60 on this live stream. The Quick 60 event for the second time being held at Mallory Park. It's a great melding pot of the racing community, the sprint racing community and the car modification community all competing together to see who is fastest around this historic Leicestershire circuit. We're going to have some wonderful action. We're going to catch up with some of the drivers as well as we bring you a full day of quick 60 action. Welcome along to Quick 60, where we are here at Mallory Park, currently in the process of the practice runs here around the Mallory Park circuit, so very much in the practice phase at the moment as some of the people competing here for the very first time get to know the circuit. We're just having some cars shown around the circuit by the pace car at the moment. They will be running in anger before too long around this circuit. The premise of Pro Quick 60 is very much a knockout format. The clue is in the title, Quick 60. When we get to the competitive runs, there will be six runs. And uh, in each session, the quickest 60% of the participating cars will advance through into the next round of competition, the next runs. Uh, so for example, in the improved class, we will have 26 cars starting in theory. Uh, the improved class is the most production oriented category you will see today. Uh, in the modified class, there will be 16. Uh, wild, there will be 12. And in the extreme class, there will be 14. Uh, but there are six classes in total. The improved class is for the more production-oriented cars. Uh, the modified class is obviously a slight step up from that. Uh, the cars are a little bit more modified uh, than, the, uh, than the improved class machines. The wild class is another step above that. Uh, the wild class, again, more intense state of tune. Uh, then you get to the really quite impressive stuff, uh, the extreme category. And uh, again, very much extreme in name and nature. You start to see some big wings, some bigger turbochargers as well. Trust me, there are a lot of turbochargers this weekend. The Outlaw class uh, is the second biggest category. And in that category, you'll see things like the famous Spooks 205, Darren Spooner's Peugeot 205. And then the top category is the Invite class where we'll see just a few cars in that category today. Uh, but in the invite class is where you see some of the real, real uh, fast guns of the world of motorsport. Some of the quickest cars in the country uh, with the likes of the SBR Chrono, uh, Damien Bradley's spectacular Subaru Legacy, uh, which these days can be encouraged to over 800 brake horsepower, uh, a really impressive piece of kit. So practice ongoing then at this stage of the day uh, for this quick 60 event here at Mallory Park. And as you can see, uh, drivers just returning to pit lane at the moment after a sighting lap. And uh, we will have competitive or high speed running on circuit once again in just a couple of minutes. Whether you're joining us on the live stream or whether you're here at Cadwell Park. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, this Quick 60 event, an offshoot of the Retro Rides gathering, which will take place here tomorrow and see uh, racing cars or performance cars from across the decades. Uh, some of the Quick 60 cars are the most modern machinery we will see this weekend. Of course, Quick 60 doesn't have uh, an age restriction in terms of what car you can bring. Retro Rides Gathering, clue is in the title. It is more 
geared towards the historic end of car culture, uh, but really is a celebration of car culture all weekend here at Mallory Park. And this event, the Quick 60, is a known commodity at this point. It's run at the Shelsley Walsh Hill Climb in 2021. We ran last year here at Mallory Park, and we are now back here again in 20. 23 for a second consecutive year at the Mallory Park circuit and it is going to be quite the spectacle especially uh, depending on what the weather does uh, everyone at, in the top end of the field is on slick tires uh, as of now they may not be by the end of the day we'll have to see uh, what goes on on that front whether we do have any rain today. I know a few of the drivers would certainly not appreciate uh, inclement weather conditions. So, Darren Spooner in his Peugeot 205 uh, will be one of the cars to watch. I know that Damien Bradley is going to be out shortly uh, in this next set of runs, as will uh, the SBR Chrono V8, uh, the incredible car of Simon Bainbridge. If you've not seen that before, you will certainly know it when you do see it. It is extremely loosely based on an Audi R8. Uh, it has an Audi RS4 4.2 litre V8 twin turbo engine. Um, the vague silhouette of the car is owes at least a little bit to an Audi R8, but in reality it is uh, just about as far removed as possible. Bespoke racing car. So cars heading out onto the circuit at the moment. And that is the gorgeous Mazda MX-5 of Mantas Slogeris. Mantas Slogeris in the MX-5 is out there, as is Darren Spooner's Peugeot 205, which just comes across the line now. That car can run with well over 500 horsepower. Slogeris coming out of the hairpin now and drifting. Not surprising, Mantas Slogeris is known as a drifter and the MX-5 comes across the line. The Audi RS4, or Audi S4 I should say, of Troy Tempest Offer is out there as well. The glorious blue Audi S4 runs a lot of rear aero and not a lot of front aero. I have to wonder if that car understeers a little bit. Uh, understand it is quite the powerful machine here. It comes across the line. Makes a great noise though. These are cars in the Outlaw classification. The Slagerus has gone around again. I'm not sure if he was listening in the briefing. I think he may have got himself a little bit lost. Uh, Slagerus in his uh, LS powered Mazda MX-5. The red number 72 Mazda MX-5 uh, is powered by a, a Chevrolet 6.2 litre V8. Uh, which is really quite special. That car heading back to pit lane though, he missed his uh, berth to go to the pits. A few drivers are doing multiple laps. I understand they are only meant to do one. So a few drivers may be going to be informed of the uh, of the rules. are probably going to be a factor today as well uh, in terms of weather. Um, certainly we've 
got cloud cover. Hopefully that doesn't materialise as anything more. Uh, but one look down at the, uh, the Haltech tent and their large flags uh, informs me that the wind is very much present and correct and it isn't going to go anywhere. Just leaving the pit lane now, just leaving the start line now, is one of BMW E36s. I believe that's Louis Edwards's car, the Welshman uh, from British Drifting Championship. That is one of the LS swapped cars. That's another big V8 in V36. Certainly makes a very different noise than you would expect. You've got the gorgeous and uh, very Kevlar-centric Ilya Krylov, uh, his incredible Renault Clio. That Clio is sometimes called Novichok. <laughs> Ilya Krylov uh, has been working on that car for a long time. It's uh, pretty much entirely different, though, actually, uh, from the car he had last year. In fact, strictly speaking, it is a different car from the one that Ilya was running last year. corner. The all-wheel drive Subaru BRZ. <laughs> I believe it uh, runs a Subaru Impreza engine. So Krilov is in. The Subaru BRZ coming in as well. The cars going out in groups of two in these warm-up sessions. They do one lap from pit entry to the finish line, and then they cruise back home to the paddock. Uh, so it is all down to one lap in the quick 60 format and that is one of the things that makes it very very intriguing the lap times themselves will be well under uh, 60 seconds for some of our very quickest drivers speaking of our very quickest drivers i believe that some of them will be out there now just out on circuit at the moment we have the incredible Subaru Impreza. I believe that's Richard White's Impreza. And then it is the SBR Chrono out on circuit. There is the SBR Chrono. The incredible Audi RS4 V8. That Impreza comes across the line. The SBR Chrono will be coming across the start finish line now. We expect that car to be one of the very quickest machines of the weekend. Spectacular GT machine. What kind of lap time does it put in? I'm waiting to see that on my timing screen. the runtime in unfortunately
but uh, just a, a word for the paddock. Uh, could all improved drivers please make their way to the pit assembly area? All improved drivers, if you can hear me, uh, you need to head down to the paddock. So the two cars in on their cool down lap and I've just got the update on the timing screen. Uh, the time for Bainbridge there is 71.90. That is a very quick time for Simon Bainbridge in the SB Racing Chrono, although I know that he can do a lot more when he starts to uh, really pull the taps on. circuits at the moment the spectacular Mazda RX-7 of Scott Carithers is out there on track that car has taken Scott to a uh, time attack championship glory previously the Damien Bradley Subaru Legacy. That is one of the quickest cars in the country. And it was initially bought for a couple hundred quid as a 94 brake horsepower automatic gearbox Subaru Legacy one lady owner. Uh, it's a much different beast now, over 800 brake horsepower. It has been turned into one of the fastest Subarus in the country. Damien Bradley. Heads out to the final corner. Looks like he's on a slightly sedate run by his immense standards, but we'll only see the taps be uh, open further as the day goes on. Uh, they out the outlaw class, or rather the invite class, uh, is the very fastest machinery out there on circuit. Their competitive one lap dashes will not begin until the very end of the day. Or towards, I should say, the end of the day. I think after lunch break, we'll start to see the very fastest cars, the invite class cars, head out onto the circuit. So then the Mallory Park circuit is our home for the day. As I mentioned at the top of the broadcast, it's the second year uh, that Quick 60 has run here at Mallory Park. This circuit, uh, not too far away from Leicester, has been open since 1956. It is very much one of the more old school circuits in the country, as you can see, um, we are running something slightly different from the standard uh, car circuit facility here. We are running one of the motorcycle chicanes, which means there is a fairly heavy braking zone, which uh, can make things interesting coming off the uh, step straight. The Edwina chicane is in use. The first corner here, which we'll see this Volkswagen Golf just uh, fly through is the Gerrard's Bend. We'll then go on to the Sep Strait and Edwina's. This car, the number 75, Daniel Scrace, the Volkswagen Golf GTI Mark II, uh, through Edwina.
tweeners. And now the John Cooper curve will follow for him. And there's one of the Rover SD1s. We'll see this car out a couple of times. In fact, it is the only SD1 here. Uh, but it will be shared between Kevin Strange uh, and his son, Thomas Strange. And uh, we'll also have George Strange, another son of Kevin, out in a Mazda RX-7. But there is the Golf uh, just arriving at the hairpin now. The Shaw's hairpin and then down through the devil's elbow. There is the golf across the line. Hopefully we'll get that time through in just a few moments. Again, these cars still practice running at the moment. We're not yet at a point uh, of doing live or rather, we're not yet at a competitive juncture of the session. There you see the other strange car getting ready. That is the uh, RX-7 in the front of the queue. That car to be driven by George Strange. That Rover SD1 does make a fabulous sound. Daniel Scrace with a 90.45 his time. We'll hopefully see Kevin Strange's time before too long, a 91.22 for him by the looks of it. You see the RX-7 waiting. These cars are in the improved class. Now, this is our most populated category. It's the category uh, for the cars in the least tuned state. Uh, so this is the closest thing you'll get to production cars. A lot of these cars, as you can see, are road legal at, the, uh, at this juncture. So you can see number plates. You can see uh, that most of them could handle a speed bump without too much drama. into Edwina's. There's the little Renault Clio. The 130 of Jesse Shakespeare. Flying through Gerrard's. accelerates through the gears and we'll cross the line again practice runs they're all still coming up to speed at this juncture this is a good opportunity to familiar ourselves familiarize ourselves with some of these cars there's the 129 machine the Clio of Tom J MR2 waiting to go out on track. Another of the Clio just coming across the line. That's the 129 of Tom J just making his way across. He's in a Clio RS 172. the paddock. Looks like Tom Jay is uh, taking every opportunity he can to keep pressing on though before he heads back to the paddock. Again, quick 64 map, just one flying lap here. So the soon as they leave the start line at the exit of pit lane, they are running and when they cross the line, that's the end of their competitive running, but uh, if they want to go back to the paddock quickly, I suppose they can, and that's exactly what Tom J did there. The Toyota MR2, car number 141, Jack Snape, heading out onto the circuit. You can see it is a fairly production-oriented car. Here comes out of Edwina's 141. Here 
comes the 141, tipping it in to Shaw's hairpin. Power down. There's the glorious Ford Falcon. This is a gorgeous machine. Clark Devy at the wheel of the 128. There's the VW Polo, the 133 of Andrew Mackerskill. There's the Falcon. Just a gorgeous looking car. Evocative of some of the 60s saloon car racing that would have run here at Mallory Park, using all of the curb on corner exit as well. Clark Devy across the line. Devy's lap time should come up soon. Jack Snape with a 92.73. Tom Jay got an 86.75 on the previous set of runs. Devi's lap time should come through shortly, but uh, it seems to be taking a little while to uh, come up on my timing screen here. Liam O'Toole is out there in his MX-5 as well. I think he has already crossed the line, if I'm not mistaken. In fact, a red flag is out on circuit, as you can see. So perhaps Liam O'Toole has gone missing somewhere in the MX-5. So red flag potentially for Liam O'Toole in the MX-5. So hopefully the running will resume shortly. So again, we're in the midst of practice two here in this quick 60 session. The cars have already all had an opportunity to run once today. Uh, but practice two is what is ongoing at the moment. There is another Mazda MX-5 heading out onto the circuit. That is the number 97 car. Maybe it was the 97. I couldn't quite tell from it's the 137. My apologies. So that's Liam O'Toole. So O'Toole didn't go missing. He hadn't started his run yet. That is the third generation Mazda MX-5. Puts the power down. Heads out of the corner. Gorgeous BMW 3 Series there. I believe that was a 3 2 on its eye of Kyle Turner, if I'm not mistaken. In fact, no, that was Nicholas Perkins, my apologies, uh, in his number 23. Lee Whitmore is out there as well in his Nissan 350Z. Uh, in these slightly lower classes we have three cars running at once uh, the top class cars they run two at a time so that's why you're seeing them filter out in batches of three there is the third of your batch of three for this time it is lee whitmore in the nissan 350z
Let's see what kind of time Whitmore can do. Liam O'Toole's time was, I think, one of the quicker ones we've seen so far this session, an 83.88. Nicholas Perkins, uh, the BMW 3 to 8, had the time for that. It's just now come through at 90.76. Lee Whitmore uh, in his Nissan 350Z. We'll have to wait to see what lap time that was. Just comes through now, 86.69. Michael Rhodes is the next expected out, the Peugeot 106. There is the 106 underway then. I don't believe this car was on my entry list, the 139. Yes, it was Michael Rhodes in his 106. There's another very nice little hot hatch for Fiesta there. Apologies, that was uh, Adam Slater's Austin Metro. Uh, that car is fabulous. Here it is now. 10-inch wheels on this Austin Metro. Um, you could put them on a decent-sized go-kart, I think. Uh, smaller than uh, most tyres you'll see. Proper pepper pot little wheels. And uh, it is a diminutive little car, but it is very well sorted, Adam Slater. Off it goes. The 106 crossing the line will get the time through shortly, hopefully. Adam Slater is out there, as is Richard Quinn in his Austin Mini. Quinn did have an issue uh, in warm up earlier at this very start of the day. Rhodes has crossed the line. We have yet to get a time through for him. Here comes Adam Slater as well. Rhodes' time was an 83.73. Adam Slater in the 27 has crossed the line. We should get a time in a few moments. Here comes Richard Quinn in his Austin Mini. And a Metro across the line. We now have a Mini across the line. As Quinn crosses the line, hopefully we should get some information about Adam Slater's pace. It was a 92.78 for Adam Slater, so he was a little bit off the pace compared to what I've seen from him previously, but I'm sure this little Metro will go quicker. Yeah. Number 27 Metro has been featured uh, in several magazines. It is a very well-known Metro. Gorgeous little car. Richard Quinn makes his way out of the, uh, off the circuit and back to Paddock after his warm-up. So it's camera one, Jim on one. I've completely lost my phone system. I'm back online with you now. Kyle Turner will be next out there in his BMW 328i. I knew that 328 was close to the front of the queue. It's coming up this time. The 328i <laughs> launch momentarily. A few drivers uh, not quite uh, understood how to uh, re enter the pit lane. You're supposed to take the short circuit cutout. A few of them have not done so. Carl uh, Turner, though, flies off in his 328i. Lots and lots of speed carried onto the Gleb straight. Step straight, I should say. And Gerard's Charlie's the long and sweeping first corner of this circuit. They're accelerating all the way through off that standing start from pit lane. You see the bouncy suspension there uh, on the number 21 machine. Oh, 
missing the chicane completely there. Uh, Michael Ashley in the Triumph 2000. That car doesn't appear to be on my entry list, but uh, it is running. <laughs> you see it's struggling there to get the power down. Michael Ashley having to try and keep uh, control of the car there. the line. There's one of the Clios. You'll see a lot of these Clios out there. This is Sheridan Bell's number 29. Sheridan Bell in the Clio 182. He will cross the line. What kind of lap did we see out of Carl Turner? It was 86.94. Michael Ashley in the Triumph have not yet had his time through. Michael Ashley, 92.97 in his Triumph 2000. Sheridan Bell with his Clio 182. I suspect that time will be quite quick. It looked like Sheridan was on a charge, but I am only getting these uh, times on a slight delay. It was a 94.1, actually, so Sheridan not quite at the speed I was expecting. So the Mazda MX-5 lining up next. Again, these are practice runs, so everyone just familiarising themselves with the circuit. They've all had one opportunity thus far today, so this is their second run. This is where you start to see them maybe just start to find some pace out there on circuit, try and get a little bit braver for those who haven't seen the circuit in a long time or perhaps have never been here before. Peter McDonald. Now, I call this car a Mazda MX-5. It is, in fact, a Mazda Unos Roadster, uh, which is, of course, an MX-5. However, it's the Japanese market car, the Unos Roadster. It was uh, imported over by a previous owner. And Peter McDonald now using it for sprinting. Johnny Hulme is out there as well in his Renault 5 GT Turbo Coupe. Japanese market MX-5, Unos Roadster continuing on. There is Johnny Holm in the number 97 Renault 5 GT Turbo. There is Sheridan, uh, sorry, I should say, uh, Roman Grendel in his uh, Renault Clio Cup 200. Road-going version of the Renault Clio Cup race car. Roman last year showed up with a Volkswagen Scirocco powered by a Formula 2 engine. 1.8 litre out of a Formula 2 car of the late 70s. So Peter McDonald has crossed the line. Here comes Johnny Hull. There is a little bit of bodywork down there on the main straight. You can see a couple of them trying to avoid that. Here comes Roman Grendel then. Again, a slightly more standard car than he was operating this time last year at Quick 60. But great for him to be joining us once again. He comes across the line. Uh, Peter McDonald's time was a 98.69. You can see that that car is seemingly quite standard. Johnny Hull, he got a good lap time there at 86.92. That is a very solid run uh, from Johnny. Roman Grendel's time will be through in just a few seconds. So Grendel's time in this number 66 car, uh, an 87.06. So actually, the Renault 5 outpaced the Renault Clio by just under two tenths of a second. Fans of the old school will be delighted with that information. <laughs> so then, next out, one of the favourites, I would say, 
in the improved class. This is Luke Cunningham's Honda EK. The EK from the Haltech stable. Haltech have arrived once again this year uh, in full resplendence. Big awning and big flags to go with it. There is the Audi TT on track as well, but uh, Cunningham heading up to the last corner. Daniel Scrace is back out there as well in his Golf GTR. Let's see what Cunningham can do. Jonathan Newbold's 144 car. And so he will come across the line in just a few seconds in the 144. So the last of the improved cars will go out for another run. The shared Rover SD1 is in the queue, so I assume uh, that will be Thomas Strange as opposed to Kevin. Currently, the fastest of the improved class runners is Michael Rhodes in that uh, Peugeot 106. The improved cars are the ones we're seeing out there on circuit. And you can see the rest of our classes that we'll see out there uh, at the bottom of your screen. But for now, we're joined on circuit by Ian Pittman and his improved classification Mini Cooper S. Pittman in the Mini. Comes flying through the John Cooper S's. Through the hairpin, power down. Strange is out there, so is one of the Dissat Micras, David Mercer, out there. But Ian Pittman comes across the line, we'll get his time in a few seconds. Unfortunately, my timing screen running a little bit on a delay. Ah. Ah, so that's a frozen picture rather than a stopped car. I was panicking for a moment there, but that is just a frozen picture. David Mercer in the micro comes across the line. Mercer across the line. Ian Pittman's lap time has still not come up on my screen. I'll give it to you as soon as I can relay it. An 80.74 for Ian Pittman. Practice two ongoing at the moment. Again, just a one lap dash for these cars. So their competitive running is from the pit lane exit to the Jordan Road surfacing gantry there on the main straight. So just one lap of competitive action. That's one of the most compelling things about sprint racing, about quick 60 as a whole, is that uh, 
the actual competitive action takes place over a very short amount of time. There's the little 143 car, Kevin Groose in the MX-5. The Spearmint Mazda. Accelerates out of Edwina's. I believe this car is on an in lap. Yes, it is. So Kevin Groose in. We haven't had his time through yet. So I believe the next cars out on circuit are from a different batch. It will be the modified class cars uh, out there next. You can see there uh, Andrew Shervington at the front of the queue, I believe that is, in his Toyota estate, the KE70. Much like the British touring cars of the 1990s and the 2010s, uh, we are more than open to estate cars. Uh, the Toyota. K70 model was uh, one of the 70s variants, or rather, I should say, early 80s variants of the Toyota Corolla. Now, that car on screen that might look like a Ford E100 to you, and well, you're right, but underneath it's a Mazda MX5, believe it or not. It's a Mazda MX5 chassis mated to a Ford E100 body shape. Quite the spectacular machine. Toyota Corolla number 95 across or out of the final hairpin through Shores. The devil's elbow and comes across the line. Again, we're now in the modified class, so we kind of take a step upwards in terms of speed. At least that is the theory. Andrew Shervington's Toyota estate was a, an 88.8 .8 lap time last time. We'll see if he improves this time by. Waiting to get that time on my screen. The Ford E100 has come across the line as well, although it wasn't picked up on live timing. So I wonder if maybe he's got some issues with uh, his transponder. Arsene Belli, or Arsene Belli, I should say, is across the line in his Volkswagen Polo saloon. Uh, Shervington's time was a big improvement, it must be said, an 82.7. So he managed to find six seconds uh, between his first and second practice run. So that estate car is going quicker and quicker. Arsene Bilai is uh, going to come in as well. That, 40 100, uh, that Ford 100E didn't register on my timing screen, so I wonder if there might be a slight issue. Uh, for Matt Irk in his uh, Ford 100E. So hopefully he uh, can get that resolved. Here comes Paul David, or rather I should say, here comes Jeffrey Turner in his MX-5. This is, of course, a second-generation MX-5, the NB model. Always thought these looked a little bit like miniature Dodge Vipers. Not particularly popular in the UK racing scene. The Mark I is, of course, one of the most popular racing cars in the country. The Mark III has a decent uh, footing behind it as well. But the Mark II, not shown quite as much love. Here's Paul David Brandrick's uh, rather distinctive Mark 1 MX-5 there. You saw the big wheel man car hustling through the hairpin there, Jeffrey Turner. Turner will cross the line momentarily. And here, 
is the first of the real thoroughbred race cars of the batch, the number 90 Fiat 500 Super Saloon. Powered by a swift tune engine, so more of a mini engine than a Fiat 500 motor, this car. Ian Medcalf's glorious Fiat 500 Special Saloon. Always worth watching. So well sorted in the corners. Jeffrey Turner's time was an 80.99. So he goes to the top of the modified class running uh, in this batch. And Ian Medcalf, I can hear him topping out. I think his gearbox hits its limit. And just under 100 miles an hour. Next up, we have some V8 Thunder. 600 plus brake horsepower. This Corvette C5. This is driven by John Edwards, number 77. That'll be our next car out on circuit. It's there we go. You can hear the sound of this incredible Corvette in the hands of John Edwards. I believe is part of the Alcon Brakes family. He's being supported this weekend by Duncan Cowper. I believe Antonio Giovinazzo is out next in his Alfa Romeo 155. There it is. The Alfa Romeo 155, done up to look a bit like a, a super touring car. Antonio Giovinazzo has run for many years in this machine. The 102 car also taking to the circuit Alex Ward in his Subaru Impreza. Across the line comes that number 77 car of John Edwards. Antonio Giovinazzo in his 155 coming through the hairpin. Punches the throttle, looks like a rather sedate run. I don't know whether maybe some teething issues for the 155 or whether maybe just taking it easy at this stage. And the impressor of Alex Ward will cross the line third of all. Just waiting to see what the Corvette's time was. It was a 78.5. So that's a fairly impressive lap time there from John Edwards. Although that graphic suggests a 56.9, which is the information I've got in the commentary box. So then the 87 Astra heads out onto the circuit. Dan Earl in his Astra VXR. This is, of course, the Astra model that was introduced around 2005 after the more saloon or coupe-esque predecessor. Ran in British touring cars to some decent success. Wasn't quite as successful. Yeah as the previous model. And there's the gorgeous Alpine Coupe, the Renault Alpine GTA LM of Tim Jeffrey off the line. There's the Triumph TR7 though of Andrew Stevenson. 
V8 powered, you can see kind of in rally specification, a gorgeous car. Powered by the famous Rover V8. It accelerates with <laughs> a good slight hint that it might need a limited slip differential there. Uh, one smoking tyre. The 69 car comes firing across the line. I'll give you the times as and when they arrive in my commentary box, although I suspect my commentary times, or the times I have in commentary, may not be quite reflective of reality because we're getting different times on the live timing versus what we're getting on the graphics, so we'll have to see. Tim Jeffrey in the Renault Alpine GTA LM now comes across the line. I believe that's the conclusion then of the modified running. Our next car out there will be the first representative of the wild class. Ben Stapley in his Datsun 240Z is expected out next on circuit. the Datsun 240Z then of Ben Stapley. This car, a Route 4 specification GT racer of the 1970s, was built by the Yan Speed Outfit. It was largely run at Dutch events at the Circuit Zandvoort. Proper 1970s race car, and Ben Stapley now takes it sprinting and hill climbing on a regular basis. Phil Cutler in his Toyota MR2. Also heading out onto the track again, the wild class, another step up uh, in terms of performance. There comes the Datsun, the gorgeous shape. Powers out of the corner. to the slightly faster stuff. We should still have three cars running, but it appears we may have moved to just two cars running at a time because Cutler and Stapley are out there on their own. Stapley runs across the line. Ben Stapley's time, that was an 85.98. Phil Cutler, an 81.6. And here comes a very interesting machine, the V8-powered Ford Cortina, otherwise known as the Fraud Cortina. Built in the 60s, we have an interview with uh, driver John Doubleday that we'll be broadcasting later on. He tells you a little bit about the history of this machine. 1960s sports saloon car, the beyond the British saloon car championship, which has always very much been nailed down in a production spec cars. There is the Ford Legend machine. In fact, it's not a, it's not officially registered as a Ford, but it is Richard Brown's Legend, the 809 car that we just saw on screen, but there goes the Fraud Cortina through the John Cooper S's and towards Shaw's hairpin. Really an exciting time in saloon car racing in the 1960s when people realized they could fit bigger engines in these cars than they came without the factory. And such cars as the Fraud Cortina were born as the Subaru Impreza of Ian Milford as the Cortina crosses the line. Get that lap time shortly, hopefully. 
Richard Brown crosses the line as Ian Milford comes through the S's. Milford in the number 61 in Pretzer. Looks like a fairly sedate run for Ian. Hopefully everything is okay with that car. John Doubleday with a 90.13. So not at searing pace from Doubleday. Richard Brown in the legend with an 87.81. I expect Ian Milford to be somewhere in the mid 90s, but we'll see once TSL has updated. Next car out there by the looks of it is the Impreza Estate, the 115 car of Tom Moon. He's got a Halloween theme to his uh, Tully's Farm backed Impreza. I was taking a look at this livery up close in the paddock earlier on. That car will be next out on the circuit. Shapes and sizes on display at Quick 60. I think the highlight of the event is just seeing just how many different cars can compete against each other. There is Tom Moon. I believe promoting uh, Shocktober at livery. The Peugeot 306. Accelerates away, that is Baz Morris with a, with a body kit that rather harks back to the Peugeot 306 Maxi rally cars of the late 1990s. The likes of Gilles Panizzi taking that car to glory on the tarmac rally stages of the World Rally Championship in the 90s. There is the Nissan Micra of Eden Young, another of the Haltech stable. That car is diminutive, but it is very quick, as we've seen on various occasions prior. The Super Impreza across the line. Tom Moon's lap time will be updated on my screen shortly. Baz Morris in the 306 wide arch comes across the line. Definitely more than just a body kit, that car pulls wonderfully out of the corners. Eden Young's Mazda, uh, Mazda Nissan Micra, uh, now comes through the devil's elbow. Tom Moon's time was an 84.68, at least on my screen. Although, again, I'm not quite certain whether I'm getting fully accurate times. Baz Morris, an 87.89. And Eden Young's lap time will no doubt update soon. But I don't think my times in the commentary box are completely accurate, unfortunately. Which hopefully... The Audi S1 of Neil Shaw heads out onto the circuit. So we have a Pikes Peak look to this with the big wings. sorted machine was sat next to the Metro 6R4 of Dr. Ian Rowlands in the uh, paddock and it did almost look like they came from the same lineage. There's Johnny Fletcher's Vauxhall Astra and here comes one of the Bradleys. This is Adrian Bradley's BMW E46 M3. You'll be familiar with this car uh, if you ever tune into BARC TV or any of the uh, Saloon car racing up and down the country. You'll be familiar with both Bradleys. The Audi S1 has crossed the line. We'll see what lap time that is. 
in due course. .75 on my screen. Johnny Fletcher, a 79.82. Adrian Bradley will have his time on in just a moment. across the line then Richard Turnock in his Skoda 110R powered by a Porsche Boxster engine no less Adrian Smith in his Toyota GR Yaris across the line next that's the what's hot hatch of the moment really the GR Yaris and that car is in <laughs> quite a significant state of tune in the hands of Adrian 
Smith. Richard Turnick's lap time was an 88.58. Adrian Smith, a 74.05. Is the Nissan GTR of Tin here. is out there, as is the Impreza of Richard Wright. We are now into the extreme running once again, incidentally. So these are the extreme cars. The extreme category, our third fastest set. Here comes across the line, here's GTR, sounds fabulous. The R35 GTR. Across the line comes the little Mazda 323 of Chris Edwards, which I'm more than aware can be a giant killer. Across the line as well comes Richard Wright in the 42. Richard Wright's Richard Wright with a 74.13 was the quickest of the three there. 74.1 is a very good time. The next group of cars out on circuit. I believe Clive Fulcher's Impreza is out there. Nissan Pulsar GTIR of Ben Stevenson is out there as well. The wonderful turquoise machine. Stevenson in the Pulsar crossing the line. But that is the start line. Now, I'm informed that uh, actually we are running a slightly longer course this year. So they run through this first corner again in the competitive running. And actually, the finish line is going on to the step straight. So the step straight is where we actually get the final times in. So they come through the first corner for a second time, then as they come out of the corner, they cross the start and finish line to complete their lap, which is why the lap times are slightly longer than anticipated, because we're actually out to, we're doing about one third laps on this Mallory Park circuit. Last year, we were doing straight one lap to the finish line, but uh, that has changed. Ben Stevenson, an 82.26 across the line in the Pulsar GTIR. That's a really quite good lap time from him. Paul Wright in the Subaru Impreza, an 86.43. Clive Fulcher, a 77.97. The S2000s so of Ramuna Sepulis is out there. J Racing body kit on that car. The Honda S2000 powering 
down the steps straight there. Towards the chicane. Always reminds me of the uh, <laughs> Spoon S2000 GC1 from the uh, from the Gran Turismo games, but this is a, a J Racing body kit rather than a Spoon body kit. Really pressing on. The uh, Subaru Impreza. Also out there on circuit, I believe that's Richard Wright. Uh, no, it's not, my apologies. It's uh, Graham Martin in his Impreza. The S2000 just coming up to the finish line now then. Rounding the final corner. And the finish line is here where you see the timing, the timing apparatus there on the straight. That's the conclusion of the running for that car, and the time was a 76.33. That is not bad going. The fastest car we've seen so far in this second practice run is Adrian Smith in his Yaris, so a 74.05 is the benchmark. The time for Graham Martin, a 77.52. So we've seen the cars go out there. Uh, apologies for missing a few times on that uh, occasion, but Darren Spooner is out there now in the Spooks Peugeot 205. This car powered by a Peugeot 106 GTI engine. Troy Tempest offering his Audi S4 out on circuit as well, but Spooner running over 500 brake horsepower. Oh, that's a moment for Tempest offer. Troy Tempest offer in a spin then. <laughs> Just about uses the turning circle of the S4 to get the car back out onto the circuit. I think four-wheel drive as well will have helped him out a little bit there. Uh, Darren Spooner to the top then. Or should be towards the top, surely, given the amount of speed he has. He should have crossed the line, has crossed the line now. We'll get the time a few seconds late. 73.7, he goes straight to the top. 
Uh, we are now running within the outlaw category, so these cars, the second class uh, in terms of speed. Troy Tempest offers lap time will, of course, be um, a little bit compromised by his spin. The number 19 comes onto the step straight and will cross the line this time. Line is crossed. And the time is a 99.03. Of course, we weren't expecting the most competitive lap after that moment. Next up is Mantas Slodgeris, or Slodgeris, I should say, uh, in the Mazda MX-5, the 72 car. This car packs a bit of a punch. I'll tell you the secret now. That Mazda MX-5 happens to have a Corvette 6.2-litre engine in it. Um, so it's a little bit more potent than one would expect from a Mazda MX-5. This car is traditionally used as a drifting machine, but he's got some big sticky tyres on it today. Mantas, Slodgeris. On the brakes there, going through the first corner, searching for the limit. Very impressive car, as is this. This is one of the invite-class cars. This is Damien Bradley's Subaru Legacy. There goes Slodgeris in the mighty MX-5. Towards the, towards the hairpin. Goes the 72. Fires out of the hairpin now. There's the BMW E36. This is a full drift car in the hands of Louis Edwards, and you can tell with the driving, can't you? Louis Edwards really pushing. Oh, and he's going full sideways. Okay. He's gone for drifting is the quickest way. This car is a regular entry in drift events across the country. Mantis. Slogaris will be the first to cross the line then from this run. And his time is 77 second lap. Damien Bradley will go quicker than that in his mighty legacy, one of the quickest two brews in the country. Very nice lap time, 72.28 for Damien Bradley. And here comes Louis Edwards. The E36. Louis Edwards drifting. The Welshman <laughs> likes to drive sideways. Uh, oh, goodness me, not that far off circuit, please. Just about managed to keep it in a straight line. How does his time match up then to uh, Mantis Dodgeris? It was a bit slower, 79.61. Here's Dimitri Shribny. He will be next one out on the circuit in his Subaru BRZ, the all-wheel drive car, Subaru Impreza internals, I believe. Uh, this car, fairly understated compared to some of the other cars in the outlaw class, but he really knows how to pedal it. Here he goes now. Real rocket launch off the line for Dimitri Shripny. Again, almost no aero on this car. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't look showroom fresh by any standards, but compared to some of the stuff around it, it looks fairly calm. Ilya Krilov's car. Slightly less um, potent, let's say. The Haltech 430 car. Simon Bainbridge is also out there on the circuit in his SB Racing Chrono. Oh, what a moment there for Dmitry Shrivny. Needs to get that around as quick as he can. He does so long before Ilya Krilov arrives at the scene, which is useful. Across the line goes Dmitry Shrivny. Simon Bainbridge comes through. The hairpin. Devil's elbow. 
Crimney's lap will, of course, be slightly compromised, but he crosses the line now. Again, the finish line on this sprint course is uh, out on the back straight, where Ilya Krilov has just gone through. Shribny's time at 81.7, albeit with a spin at the hairpin. Ilya Krilov at 77.54. But what about Bainbridge? He crosses the line in the SB Racing Chrono. Have not had the time through just yet, but I imagine it will be quick. Just waiting to see that time appear on screen. Bainbridge, Bainbridge's time didn't appear on my live timing. Here comes Richard White then in his mightily impressive Subaru Impreza. This car, I believe, has been in build for many years. One of the first runouts that the car has had. Very impressive machine. There's the Mazda RX-7. Out onto the circuit, not appearing on the timing as running. But this is the car of Scott Carithers, another of the invite class cars. Richard White in the big Impreza. See how it's sticking to the circuit. Comes across the line now. And it's registered on my screen as a 44 second time, but that's clearly not correct. So something's gone wrong there. The Lancer RX-7 is not registered as running, unfortunately, so I'm not going to be able to give you a time of this Mazda. Richard Wright is alleged to have done a 44.9, but I'm afraid I don't think that's possible. Uh, also, he'd registered the time before he crossed the finish line, so I'm going to have to express doubt on that. Across the line comes the RX-7 of Carithers. He now heads back to the paddock. As you can see, the no cars there at the moment, and that's because that is the conclusion of second practice run. Now, they were committing to doing one run apiece uh, out on circuit. Oh, sorry, two practice runs out on circuit. Everyone now has had two practice runs. So I think our next running will probably be more practice. However, it could also be the first competitive run. I'm not too sure. More practice. Oh. Come. Just been informed then that we're going to an early lunch break because we're ahead of time. Uh, so midday, we're expecting to be back out on circuit at one o'clock. Uh, so 1 p.m. is when we'll get started with the official running. So practice, I believe, is concluded. So we are expecting the cars back out on circuit at 1 p.m. Uh, but until then, we are taking our lunch break. We'll be back out with more competitive action. We've had the practices here already at Cadwell Park today, but the Quick 60 will begin in earnest after lunchtime. Six runs, an elimination format. The fastest 60% of each category will go on to the next round until there are just two cars left in each category. It will then be a one-off run 
head-to-head -to, -head to determine who wins in each class. So for now, from here in the commentary box, enjoy your lunch break and make sure you rejoin us at 1 p.m., just before 1 p.m. potentially, when the cars head out onto the circuit. One of the leading lights in the Outlaw class is Darren Spooner and the mighty 205 that has been tinkered as long as I've known it, and I've only known it for a fraction of its lifetime. Last year here at Mallory, uh, you really started to show what the car was capable of, and I understand that since we last saw it at Quick 60, more has happened. You, you can't stop tinkering. No, that's right, no. So um, the car itself has been built for many years, um, but we um, finally got around to fitting a six-speed sequential gearbox to the car, which is something that, that's been in the in the process for many, many years now. But um, yeah, that's in, um, caused numerous problems. Um, nearly a year now, it's been uh, it's been kind of on the bench or in the shop. Um, but yeah, so we've we fitted sequential gearbox with, um, with paddle shift. Um, we've unfortunately had to remake the subframe, the drive shafts, the engine mount, the inlet manifold, throttle body, all the gears, differential, final drive. It's been uh, it's been a hell of a lot of work. Obviously, that's why we've been out. And um, today is our first first proper shakedown for the car. So the first time the car's actually moved under its own steam off the dyno, if you like. But of course, after a couple of runs, you're, you're going to start giving it some welly. Yeah, absolutely. So um, <laughs> I'll know if I've got a car underneath me within the first corner, and then um, you know if there's a car there, absolutely, we're going to we're going to push. Um, if not, we'll get it sorted out hopefully today. Um, but yeah, it's exciting. It is exciting to see what we've what we've what we've built this time. Excellent. Well, keep an eye out on the Spooks 205. Going to be one of the quickest cars, also one of the most distinctive cars. I mean, massive aero, makes a brilliant sound as well. We look forward to seeing Darren out there with this car a little later on in the day. You may have already seen a couple of runs from this machine, and hopefully they've gone well. One of the most spectacular looking, spectacular sounding cars here at Quick 60 every year so far has been the Chrono V8, the SBR Chrono V8, courtesy of this man Simon Bainbridge. Obviously, we saw this car at its full chat last year, cloud cover this year. Um, I've seen you pilot it in the rain before. Yeah. I know that even though it looks like a fearsome beast, you, you've actually got it to be, at least by the standards of its performance, quite a compliant car. Yeah, I mean, that's the whole idea. I think in the wet, you've just got to try and keep it smooth um, and just sort of just be gentle, I suppose, isn't it? Because it's, it can bite, obviously. So just try and keep it as smooth as you can and uh, fingers crossed, keep it pointing in the right direction. <laughs> and I've been, I've been keeping an eye. I don't think I've seen many posts recently regarding the V10 project, but how's that coming along? Um, still making progress. The problem we're having is, obviously, when we're trying to run this as well, time gets taken away into this one and yes. away from the other but we're hoping to have a really good push this winter so once we get to close the season we'll try and push on so we've got the tubs done the engines done the gearbox is there uh, just starting to think about suspension and bits and pieces so yeah and for, for what i've seen you just you seem to be a bit of a speed freak if you'd admit to such a thing you, you you seem to be forever in pursuit of going a couple of seconds quicker than you have so far <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's racing, I guess. Yeah. You always want to move forward, you always want to try and... Uh, yeah, I mean, I always, from when I first started, it doesn't matter what what you drive, try and beat your own time, and eventually, hopefully, you'll be able to climb up to a class and then goes from there. So, yeah, just keep building from that all the time, yeah. 
I don't know how you build upon something quite this spectacular, Simon, but I look forward to seeing you run again in this SBR Chrono V8. You'll definitely hear it on the live stream once it's out there. It's an incredible sounding car. Thank you for bringing it again this year. No problem. It's always such a well-run, friendly event. And uh, yeah, it's, it's a great fun, great fun event. No pressure, just enjoy it. So thank you very much. We're going to enjoy it. I promise you that. Keep an eye out for this green beast on the circuit. So we've got a lot of V8 thunder here at Quick 60 and already in the morning warm-up sessions we've heard this wonderful Corvette from John Edwards going around the circuit. Incredible rumble, you've, you've given me some facts and figures already, but um, t tell the audience what you're working with from a power perspective. Uh, so it's a standard uh, 2004 C5 Z06, uh, but it's got some extra source courtesy of a, a Procharger, Supercharger, mm -hmm. and that's it. It's got coilover suspension, uh, uprated brakes uh, from Alcon, and that's about it really. So just a pretty standard car. Yeah. Ish. <laughs> I heard 620 brake earlier. Yeah, six, 618 okay. apparently. There you go. Although it doesn't feel like it, I think I need some more. Ah. But it, no, it's pretty good. It's, over, it's, it's definitely over sort of 580. Yeah. So. How much running have you done at Mallory prior to today? I drove here last in 2005. Wow. I did the plum pudding on Boxing Day. Oh. Yeah. In I, what? In a Westfield. Oh. I put it on pole by like six seconds because mm. it was it was dry and then it got damp. Yes. And I just, I think I ended up midfield or something because right. I had the wrong tires, but it was just a lot of fun. So uh, yeah, I kind of remembered which way it turned and it's, it's a nice little track. It's nice to be back here actually. Cool. And obviously, you, you mentioned Westfields. I note this Pikes Peak sticker on his race suit, and that's because it had to be lent to a gentleman over here. We'll bring him in, Duncan Cowper, who has been known for a long time in the sprint racing scene. I'll just move over here to for his Dax Rush. Um, last time I spoke to you about that car, it had a 1986 F1 turbocharger on it, uh, Mahusive wings. The Mahusive wings remain, but it was quite substantially re-engineered for a bit at Pikes Peak this year, wasn't it? Yeah, that was right. We was down, I think, at Rye House, um, where we ran the car. Uh, we, we took the turbocharger off for Pikes. Yes. We went for a slightly different one that was more suited to the hill. Um, the wings got bigger, sort of S Quattro-esque Pikes Peak style, just for, um, you know, to make it look like a Pikes Peak car, but we had quite a good result with it as well there. So yeah, all down to this man here. Yeah. Um, yeah, to sort of achieve a dream that we wanted to try and, as a clubby, could we take, you know, as John called it, a sort of noddy-ish car out to Pikes and go and uh, conquer their mountain, which we managed to do. So when are you going to have a go at Quick 60 then? Well, I just came down here to have a quick look. You know, I think Ollie Clark ran here last year, so I know it's on the... But I think to run in this class, you need a... Unfortunately, need a roof. Yes. So we'll have to try and dig something out the armory with a roof. <laughs> Come and have a... Yeah, we've got the fastest van over there. <laughs> so is, it's not lost the race yet, that van. So, yeah, we might have to debut it at uh, Mallory, maybe. Duncan Cowper's Super Transit could be coming to a quick 60 near you. Great to hear from Duncan and from John as we continue to catch some perspectives from the quick 60 paddock. One of my favourite cars here at Quick 60 is the Fraud Cortina uh, in the hands of this man, John Doubleday. I, 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 I learnt the story of this car at Quick 60 in 2021. Yes. Um, but I'm not qualified to deliver it. So tell us a little bit about why it's a fraud and not a Ford. Right. Um, <laughs> in the early 60s, Doc Murfield, who owned this, uh, prior to this had a Mark I Cortina. And he was the first one that put a V8 in a saloon car and obviously wiped up everywhere, got lap times everywhere, and everyone then followed. So he was really the instigator of Special Saloon, Super Saloon. He ran the Mark I for a few years and then um, went to the Mark II. Um, they were called Frawl because they had the big V8s in, yes. which obviously surprised a few people when he lifted the bonnet. <laughs> so, yeah, hence the name. 
pioneers then because obviously you look around this paddock today there's an mx5 with a chevy v8 in it and all sorts of stuff like that um the, the 60s were very much a time for people to just wedge as big of an engine as possible in a small british car and hope for the best wasn't it that exactly, was exactly yes i mean the technology wasn't there but the brains were and the guy who converted this ray harris also converted the mark one called tina and he actually put a lot of big engines in road cars he was very famous in the 60s for doing that so he got the job of obviously working on this one and the, the predecessor of it. Excellent and obviously here at Mallory Park um, how much experience have you got of this place? I've been here once. once. Uh, back in 2010 when we actually put this all together we got invited here with the um, CSCC club and they, um, they actually got quite a few of the old super saloons. I remember that. Baby Bertha, um, the uh, um, DAF mm -hmm. um, and the V-Dub so um, they got all those. So we came and raced here then. That's the only time I've been here. So um, it's quite nice coming back. It's quite nice actually being out on your own without other cars around you. Mm -hmm. So you can actually think of what you're trying to do rather than be looking in the mirrors at other people and seeing what they're doing. <laughs> That is often one of the things you hear about sprint racing. Uh, thank you so much for bringing this car out. Uh, a joy to see it again and uh, best of luck out there. Well, hopefully it stays dry and you'll see a bit more of it. If you see the rain, you'll see it on the grass. <laughs> we'll see if that comes nice. true. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. So one name you're going to hear a lot this weekend is Bradley. I thought I'd come down to the BMW Bradleys first and catch up with Adrian. Uh, Obviously, I'm familiar with these two cars. A lot of people who watch circuit racing will be familiar with these two cars. Um, but you've been you've been dragged into the world of sprint. Yeah, Damien dragged us along. It looks like a good event, to be fair. Um, I like the idea of it. I love Mallory. I love yeah. the track. The car seems to be really well suited for the track. So we'll see. And obviously, this an E46. Ronan's car's a uh, E36. Uh, much different beasts from the the legacy that we'll see from Damien. Yeah, just a bit. Yeah, he's got a lot more power, four wheel drive traction control abs every, everything really you need yeah um these these are quite a bit quite a bit slower but these these go well these go good for what they are normally aspirated engines no turbos no four-wheel drive yeah they go well and i mean i've seen you you know fight full-on aussie v8 supercars in these things before a, a well-sorted three series bmw can be just as quick as a well-sorted touring or gt car yeah 100 percent. It, it just comes down to the the track, with the ones with the big straights, that's where we struggle, simple yeah. as that. On the bends, they're just phenomenal point to point, I can't recommend them enough. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we, we, we all love racing them, there's quite a big group of us now, so it's good. And uh, how much have you done here at Mallory? Um, we've done, I've done a race here two or three years ago and then we've done one race here earlier this year. And I've just been out for the first practice now, so I, I know the track all right. Um, just a matter of getting used to it from one lap, no warm ups, but no, it's good, I like the track, it's a good track. Sprint racing, very much a different animal, but I have no doubt that both of the BMW driving Bradleys will adapt very well. Thank you for talking to us and good luck out Thank there. Thank you very much. Cheers. So one thing I did want to show was some of the variety that we've got here. Obviously, we've got these wonderful BMW M3s here, the E36 and E46 shapes. Now, those are fairly standard. Uh, saloon car racing fair you'll see a lot of them but then you pan over to this the Vauxhall Astra Coupe it looks like Triple Eight Racing decided to go Pikes Peak racing with one of the British touring cars or something like that a really spectacular piece of kit there as we continue down you've got this incredible widened uh, legend machine far different uh, state of tune than the UK Legends Championship cars carry on down you've got these incredible Subaru Impreza's here uh, the wonderful double day driven uh, fraud Cortina here as well uh, and you just you get an impression just coming down this row of cars just what variety there is here at quick 60 I mean you've got a late 60s Cortina an 80s MR2 a 1970s Datsun a 240z this car is actually a factory built uh, Jan speed group 4 machine that raced in Holland a lot uh, in the early mid 70s and then alongside that you've got this incredible Metro 6R4 now I do want to bring you in for this one in particular I understand they are currently replacing a drive shaft on the car after first practice but if we come in close on this car you will see 
if in doubt, flat out, Colin McRae MBE. And that's not just uh, a little bit of decoration, that's not just an homage, that this is genuinely an ex-McRae owned Metro 6R4. So again, a very different piece of kit, a very exciting piece of machinery. This incredible Audi S1 with power coming out of every pore, you can see uh, that amount of venting uh, on the bonnet. Now often when you see cars with that kind of venting, that's for show, not that one. That's every bit as powerful as you'd expect it to be looking at it. More Impressors, this wonderful Triumph TR7 V8. Proper British V8 motor on that one, or well, Buick sourced British V8 motor, depending on who you ask in the Triumph TR7. Um, this Corvette, we've already seen this today. Um, and then the wonderful little Fiat 500. Could you have two more different cars together? C5 Chevy Corvette C5 next to a Fiat 500 Special Saloon, which has absolutely nothing in common with an actual Fiat 500 other than its body shape, uh, but an absolutely wonderful, unique race car. Alphas, this Ford 100E, which is uh, Mazda MX-5 chassis on a 50s Ford body shell, incredible car. I mean, just everywhere we look here at Quick 60, there are sensational cars. Over the course of the broadcast, hopefully you'll get a chance to see all of them in anger, in action. Uh, but just walking through this paddock, you really get an impression of what this event is about. It's all comers, anything goes, and so many different types of exciting car.
Just a reminder, five minutes until the driver's briefing. Driver's briefing at 12.30. Make sure you attend 12.30 for the driver's briefing. <laughs>
Yep, holding on one. As you can see then, the lunch break has been completed, as has the driver briefing, 
And now the competitors of Quick 60 are lining up, getting ready to go. What we have now is elimination time. The morning practice runs are over. Everyone has got their eye in, and it's now time to start eliminating some competitors. How does that work, you ask? Well, the clue is in the title of the event, Quick 60. In each round, the quickest 60% of each class will move forward onto uh, the next round. There are six rounds, or six runs in total. The sixth run, in each class, and there are six classes of cars on the circuit, will be a one-on-one -on -one shootout at the end of the day. So the prizes at the end of the day, a one-on-one -on -one shootout to determine who is the quickest of all in each of the classes. There are six classes total, improved, modified, extreme, outlaw, wild, and invite. The invite classes for the very quickest machines but all throughout the categories, there are some really incredible race cars out on the circuit. There you see the different classes. How they compare to each other isn't really that relevant. It's all about what goes on within the class. That is what will count. Uh, so in this improved category, which are currently there, uh, on the uh, pit lane, as you see there, just doing their track inspection. Uh, but the improved cars there in the pit lane, of course, getting ready to go. Uh, they will be out very shortly. Now, there are going to be 26 cars running in the improved. The top 16 will go through. So think of it almost like the Formula One qualifying format. You've got a cutoff point that you have to get by in order to continue on. In Formula One, of course, if you drop down or if you qualify from 16th to 20th, you're eliminated. Here, if you're not in the top 16 fastest runners around this Mallory Park circuit, you're gone. That's the end of your day, and you'll whittle down to a one-on-one -on -one shootout at the very end. Uh, as you saw on screen there, my name is Adam Weller. I'll be bringing you the action here at Quick 60 an event run by the Retro Rides organization, who of course will have their incredible Retro Rides gathering here tomorrow, as well as Hill Climb Monsters, who we are broadcasting out to live at the moment. And while the cars out on the pit lane at the moment look relatively tame by the uh, incredibly high standards of Hill Climb Racing, we are uh, going to see some serious big screaming cars out on the circuit in the next few hours. The first run is underway then. It is the Mazda RX-7. That is uh, the 26th entry in at the hands uh, of 26 is what it says on the side, but I think it might actually be Thomas. Yes, it's Thomas Strange, sorry, uh, in the 26 car. So Thomas Strange uh, was meant to be in a Rover SD1, but I now see that he's running around in his brother's Mazda RX-7. So that seems to have changed. There goes Jonathan Newbold in the Audi TT. Newbold in the TT. The TT flies past. That's the finish line there. Uh, the 130 car also now running on circuit. The 130 of Jesse Shakespeare out on circuit as well. So it's Thomas Strange in the RX-7, Jonathan Newbold in the Audi TT, and Jesse Shakespeare. Let's see who is quickest of all. There's the Clio of Shakespeare. Meanwhile, the RX-7 coming around the final corner of the lap now then, so turn one. The final corner is the same as the first corner. Here comes the RX-7 now. Here it comes, approaching the step straight, and this is where the finish line is now. On the back of the step straight, through the timing beam they go. First time on the board then for Thomas Strange. We'll see how that compares to Jonathan Newbold, who will be coming up next. Jesse Shakespeare in the Clio as well. Shakespeare in the Clio comes running through. 
through Gerrard's and Charlie's and down the straight. Thomas Strange with a 102 second time. Jonathan Newbold, an 89.7 in the TT. And Jesse Shakespeare was quickest of that trio, an 84.60. Will that be enough to get him through into the second run? 16 cars will go through. Will Jesse Shakespeare make it? Will Jonathan Newbold make it? I fear Thomas Strange unfortunately will not with a 102 second time, but we'll have to wait and see. Next cars then should be coming up and indeed here they are. The Clio of Tom Jay is first out of the blocks, the 129 car. Here he comes now. Carrying some nice momentum towards the step straight. Also out there, Jack Snape in the Toyota MR2. There he goes. He will be followed by Nicholas Perkins in the 328i BMW. Snape with one of the more production uh, based cars out there. He will do well to get into the deep end of this field, I suspect. Tom Jay in the 129 accelerates out of the hairpin towards the Devil's Elbow now. There is the number 23 of Nicholas Perkins. He crosses the, well, he heads towards the chicane. Meanwhile, here comes Tom Jay through Gerard's Bend and Charlie's for the second and final time. He will cross the timing beam to complete his run on this sprint course. Halfway down the step straight, you can see the timing beams there on the grass. And he crosses the line now. We'll give you his time as soon as it appears on my screen. Jack Snape showing up next. It was an 86.5 second lap time for Tom Jay by the looks of it. Here comes the MR2 of Jack Snape. Snape crossing the line in the 141. Nicholas Perkins, he comes through now. There goes Snape across the line. The time for rather the time for Snape was a 90.28. Nicholas Perkins a 90. Point six seven. Next car's out there, and it is the 104 Nissan 350Z of Lee Whitmore flying towards the step straight for the first time. Has one lap of Mallory to do from there. Heads towards Edwina's, the chicane, which is typically more used for the motorcycles. A little bit of added challenge, a deep braking zone before the John Cooper S's. There's the Mazda MX-5 in the hands of Liam O'Toole. Andrew Mackerskill also out there in a VW Polo. There it is. Don't rule out this car. It's well sorted. And it's in the hands of a driver who knows how to get it around the track. So, Demi diminutive though it may be, there may be a shot here. Lee Whitmore comes flying by. Three and a half litre V6 engine in that Nissan 350Z. He's come past the normal start finish line but of course our time on this sprint layout concludes as he comes onto the back straight here the step straight is the conclusion of this layout here comes the 104 car across the line and the time is going to be somewhere in the 80s an 84.97 that is very impressive the Mazda coming across the line, the 137 car. Can it get anywhere near that 84.9 from Whitmore? The answer, I'm afraid, is no. In fact,
fact, no, yes, sorry, Liam O'Toole at 83.1, amazing. What a time from O'Toole. Here comes the polo. Can it get anywhere near? Andrew Mackerskill giving it a shot. He will come across the line in just a few seconds, 89.2. So a little bit further down. So then the 27 car heading out, it's Adam Slater in his mighty Metro. A little bit of a puff of smoke from this car, the number 27 machine. Again, one of the less powerful cars in this group, but Slater has driven this car for a long time. He knows how to pedal. Let's see if anything can be done. There is one of the BMWs, that's Kyle Turner in his 328i. Michael Ashley also out there in his Triumph 2000, the 211 entry. There's Slater. Carries the momentum nicely through the hairpin, through Shaw's hairpin. Passes the motorcycle chicane, the bus stop. There's the Triumph 2000. see there the slide the 211 car of Michael Ashley the 27 coming through Charlie is now and on to the Seb straight let's see what Adam Slater can do in the Austin Metro can he get up there in the 83s the 84s the sharp end it would be a mighty drive if he can waiting for the time 92.7. Don't know if that's quite going to be enough to get through into the next round. Kyle Turner in the 140 has crossed the line. His time will come up momentarily. It's an 83.3 for Kyle Turner. The 211 car powering out. That's the Triumph 2000 bouncing across the line in the hands of Michael Ashley, and the time is an 88.85. So as he's had a spin after he's crossed the line, but he's gone sixth fastest. Remember, the top 16 will go through into the next round in this improved category. Will he... So then next up, the 75, Daniel Scrace. Oh, Adam Slater has had an issue. So the Metro was puffing smoke. Perhaps an issue with that 1400cc A-series motor. He runs a plain livery, but he is sponsored by Radco Motorsport. Races it in uh, Mod Prod Hill Climb and Sprints, does Adam Slater. It's a 1986 Austin Metro. Unfortunately, the car looked a little bit off pace in the run, and immediately post run, it's unfortunately come to a halt. So, potentially some issues there for Adam Slater. Do absolutely love that car, though, those little slick tires on. Uh, Force Racing 10-inch split rims. Daniel Scrace, the one we're expecting out there next in his Mark II Golf GTI. The second generation 
of the Golf, the second generation of the GTI as well. Of course, they uh, built these cars from the uh, in the early mid 1980s. I think it was 1984 potentially uh, when they introduced the Mark II GTI. The and off goes Daniel Scrace. So Scrace is underway. Next up, Sheridan Bell as well in his Renault Clio 182. So a bit of a, a hot hatch batch here. Scrace powers out of Charlie's towards the step straight. Sheridan Bell in the 29 will follow him and there should be a third car out there as well but I'm not sure it's actually left the start line just yet in fact yes it has just leaving now it's the big Ford Falcon of Clark Devy so three very different cars because look at this big American muscle car the 128 of Clark Devy Used to race against Cortinas, Imps, Minis, Mustangs, Jaguar, Mark IIs in the British Saloon Car Championship in the 1960s. Did the Ford, Ford Falcon sprints. Clark Devy at the wheel. He's up against the Golf GTI Mark II and a Renault Clio 182 and the rest of the improved collection, of course. Let's see what Daniel Scrace can do then in the Golf GTI Mark II. Scrace will be aiming to be in the 83s, the 84s. He'll certainly be safe if he can achieve that to get through into the 16 that will run in the second batch. And he does not really get close to that. He does get an 88.9. That might be enough to be safe. I think the 88s are going to be about where the demarcation line is at the conclusion of this first round of runs. Here comes Sheridan Bell. He crosses the line. Here comes the big Falcon. Obviously, this car is not a Lotus Elise. It isn't going to be firing through the corners, but it will have some good low-end torque, some good grunt in general. Clark Devy comes onto the step straight, crosses the timing beam, and his time is a 91.73, so he actually goes quicker than Sheridan Bell. Very impressive. So he went quicker than the Clio 182 there, but he's still 12th position. So Clark Devy is in 12th. I suspect that once all 26 cars have run, he might end up eliminated, but we'll have to wait and see. Here comes Richard Quinn in the 136 Mini, the Austin Mini. The electrician from Andover is running a 189 horsepower Vauxhall red top motor in this Mini. It's 190 brake, 550 kilos. He'll be running over 300 brake horsepower per tonne. That is quite good. David Mercer in the Nissan Micra. Also out there on circuit and to make it a uh, trifecta of small cars. Here comes Johnny Holm as well. He's got a Renault 5 GT Turbo Coupe. That car has just launched from the start line. Richard Quinn is about halfway through the run. Here he is at the hairpin. Out of Shaw's hairpin we go. A little puff of smoke as he tries to put the power down out of that box or red top. There is Holm in the Renault 5 GT Turbo Coupe. Across the start-finish line goes the Mini in the hands of Richard Quinn. But again, the start-finish line here isn't the end of the lap because as they go through the first corner once again, through Gerard's bend, through Charlie's, and then the step straight will round out our lap here or our run here for Richard Quinn in the Mini. Quinn comes across the line now. The fastest time in improved is an 83.16. Where does the Mini come in among them? It's 96.02. I'm not sure Quinn is going to get through with that kind of pace. In fact, he almost certainly will not. Let's see what David Mercer's time is. 
Mercer crosses the line. I'll give you his time in just a moment. Here comes Johnny Hall. Mercer with a 92.92. Again, I'm not sure that's competitive enough to get through. What can Johnny Holm do in the Renault 5 GT Turbo Coupe? He comes across the line now. The time at the very top of the sheets is an 83.16. I don't think the Renault 5 can get there, but he does get an 87.99. That is the sixth fastest time we've seen so far. And to me, I think that should be enough to get through. I think if you're under an 89 seconds, you should be safe at this juncture. Next group of cars already running. Michael Rhodes in the Peugeot 106 is underway. Next up will be Roman Grendel in his Renault Clio Cup 200 as well. Grendel is underway as Michael Rhodes powers out of Charlie's. On the brakes early there to go to the Edwina chicane. There is Grendel in the 66. Ian Pittman will also be out there in his new shape BMW Mini Cooper S. The second generation BMW Mini in the hands of Ian Pittman. Michael Rhodes is heading to the hairpin. Roman Grendel, meanwhile, making his way through Edwina's. Little bit wide there on exit. Meanwhile, Michael Rhodes comes by. Really revvy, that little Peugeot 106. Great engine note as it comes by. should be coming through the final corner now. He looked quick to me. I think this time should be enough to get him through into the second run for the improved category. But let's see what the timing beam says. 83.1 is the fastest time in improved thus far. Can roads get anywhere near? Still waiting for the timing screen to update. It's an 83.77, so he goes third fastest. Good job, Michael Rhodes. What can Roman Grendel do in comparison? He crosses the timing beam to conclude the lap there. Let's see what the time is. An 86.05 puts him sixth fastest. He will be safe from elimination, I'm fairly sure. Here comes Ian Pittman, then. Pittman crosses the timing beam to conclude his run, and it is an 80.53. That is a very good time from Ian Pittman. That's the new benchmark. Pitt Pittman goes fastest on an 80.53. But next up is one of the favorites for me, Luke Cunningham in his Honda EK SIR. This car is very quick in his hands. We've seen it before at Quick 60. The Haltech Honda. The Birmingham-based driver, Luke Cunningham, who is the technical manager at the Haltech ECU company. This car was originally a Jordan edition Honda EK Civic before a previous owner repainted it. Can you believe it? Someone repainted the Jordan edition. I don't like that thought. Races this in Time Attack, another sprint series. And uh, coming in with a lot of experience, knows how to pedal that car. I'm expecting him to be up there towards the top. There's George Strange in the RX-7, Kevin Groose in his Mazda MX-5, or rather his Unos Roadster, oh, no, it is Mazda MX-5, my apologies. Uh, Kevin Groose, though, is out there. So Kevin Groose running nicely there. Crossing the normal finish line is uh, Luke Cunningham, but of course he's still got to go around Charlie, or he's still got to go around um, the first corner yet through Gerard's Bend and Charlie's. Uh, we should see Cunningham across the line any moment now. Here he comes. Now the benchmark, newly set by Ian Pittman, is an 80.53. How close does Cunningham get? Does he measure up? No time on the screen just yet. It takes a few minutes to filter through. Only a 90.79. That's disappointing for Cunningham. Someone who I thought was one of the favorites might not get through. Thomas Strange, meanwhile, in the RX-7, comes out of what is the final corner on this layout, crosses the line. And what kind of time is it? 
It's a 94.49, so George Strait will be eliminated, and I suspect Kevin Groose will be as well. Let's keep an eye on the 143, though. Time may be enough, we'll have to see. I'm not seeing a particularly quick time, though, from the body language of the car. I think Kevin Groose may even have an issue or something, but he's not going to get through. Groose across the line. And it's a 10, uh, 101 second time, so that's one minute uh, and 41 seconds. That is not enough to get through. So Kevin Groose will be going home early. Only two more cars left to run then, I believe. It should be Andy Boswell. Peter McDonald running next, so McDonald in the Unos Ross uh, Roadster. The Japanese market uh, Mazda MX-5, of course, was labelled as a Unos Roadster in that market. Launched in 1989. Peter McDonald in the 127. Pressing on nicely. Now, McDonald is the only one running currently, but I do think we're going to get a couple more runs. Potentially we'll see that RX-7 out in the hands of Kevin Strange, because all of the SD1 drivers are now sharing that RX-7. Let's see what Peter McDonald can do. Still pressing on. His car quite notably stock, so I'm not too sure how he will compare. He has a, a lightweight flywheel. He's got a few uh, exhaust bolts on and things of that nature. Only making 123 brake horsepower, though, this driver in the hands of the uh, Leyland base driver. Peter says that this car is the same age as him, imported from Japan in 2006, but he and the car are both 1991 models. Will they be seen again today or will they be eliminated? They need to be in the top 16. Crossing the line, and we'll get the time through on my screen in just a few minutes. Waiting for it to appear. I'm not sure it's going to be enough. Peter McDonald. Peter McDonald's time has not come through yet. So Peter McDonald's time still hasn't come through on my timing screen. I'm not sure if that's a transponder issue. I don't know whether McDonald is going to be partaking. So 26 cars were due to take the start in this improved category they were then immediately going to go into their second runs so the improved category will be back out next again with run two i'm not sure if anyone else is left to do run one i know that the uh, strange family are now all sharing the rx7 kevin strange is yet to do a run but it looks to me like actually we are concluded with run one i don't think kevin is getting a go unfortunately because the Audi TT is rolling back towards the start line. That suggests to me that they're now going through the process of telling drivers who is through and who is eliminated. So the TT going to the front of the queue, then Jonathan Newbold is through. Here are the drivers that have unfortunately been eliminated. Clark Devy with his Ford Falcon. We won't see the Falcon out there again. Just missed the post, unfortunately. Sheridan Bell also not going to take the uh, next run, sadly, in the 29 Clio. Adam Slater, we saw him have problems with the Metro. And I'd say a rather surprise elimination from him. David Mercer's Micra also not going to be back out there. George Strange in the RX-7. 
didn't quite get a quick enough time either. Richard Quinn, uh, not quick enough. Kevin Groos, not quick enough. Thomas Strange, also in the RX-7, wasn't quick enough. Peter McDonald did run, but his time didn't register. I don't think it was fast enough to get him through. So 16 cars will run. And uh, rather miraculously, the Luke Cunningham car, which I thought was a favorite, remember, Luke Cunningham is going to make it. He was the 16th and final driver. He was the first driver to get through, 16th and last of those to get through. It's now 16 cars having a runoff in the improved category. The Audi TT of Jonathan Newbold, the 144 is running at the moment. Tom Jay is next up and Jesse Shakespeare and his Clio out there as well. Looks like they're running in the same approximate order as they did previously. So then, Jonathan Newbold heading through the first corner once again. Gerard and Charlie's. So Jonathan Newbold rounding the final turn. On to the power. We'll see what kind of time Newbold sets. On this occasion, he will set the early benchmark. It's an 87.11. Tom Jay is next. And Jesse Shakespeare will follow him. Two Clios following the TT. Let's see which of the Clios is quicker. Tom Jay across the line. 87.1 is the benchmark from Jonathan Newbold. The 130 Clio of Jesse Shakespeare round. Charlie's and onto the step straight 87.1 for Newbold I haven't had Tom Jay's time through yet hopefully Tom Jay's time does show up on my screen momentarily neither of the TT and uh, neither of the Clio's times have appeared on my screen just yet as soon as I have them I'll tell you until I have them uh, I, I, I can't tell you Newbold, Shakespeare and Jay it was that ran there, but neither Shakespeare or Jay's times have appeared on the screen. Hopefully they have been manually timed. Does look as though there's... Ah, now Jesse Shakespeare's time has come up. So an 83.76 for Jesse Shakespeare. So Shakespeare's time has come up on screen. It's a good time. I think an 83 should be enough for him to get through. Of course, we're down to 16 cars now. Uh, the top 10 from this run will go through. So again, we're going to lose more cars. Six cars will be eliminated from this run in the improved category. So you've got to be in the top 10 to get through into the third run for the improved class. The next car there is Nicholas Perkins in his BMW 328i. So Nicholas Perkins will be out there momentarily. I think for now, though, there might be an issue with TSL timing because Tom Jay's uh, Renault hasn't been registered. So I think they're just waiting to see that the timing is OK before they send anyone else out there. Hearing some revs rising, indeed. There goes Nicholas Perkins. Perkins in the BMW sets off, followed by Liam O'Toole in the Mazda MX-5. He'll be next out there. BMW 328i. Powers onto the step, step straight. 
exactly one lap of Mallory left to run from there. Liam O'Toole in the 137 through the chicane. Andrew Mackerskill in the polo, the 133 car also running. Would expect that uh, O'Toole will be one of the favourites. He was quick in the first runs in this MX5. <laughs> Nice power down there in the 137. Nicholas Perkins heads through the last of his right hand bends. The finish awaits him halfway down the step straight. This car has been owned by Nick Perkins for 12 years. He knows his way around the car. And the time, 90.64. He uses the car for track days. A 90.64, I think, might be a time that puts him up for elimination. We'll have to wait and see. Only 10 will go through. Liam O'Toole with an 83.33. Liam O'Toole with an 83.3. What can Mackerskill do in the polo, the 133 car? An 87.35, that's a solid time. He has an outside shot of getting through, I'd suggest, Mackerskill. I think we might be more at 85s, 86s to get through into the top 10. But that was a solid effort from the driver of the polo. Next up will be another BMW, Kyle Turner in his BMW 328i launches off the line. Very nice getaway. You can see that this car is a little less stock than the 328i that was out there previously. Just testing the limits there, accelerating all the way through the first corner, all the way through Gerrard's. Really end up holding on within uh, the very limits of adhesion by the end. Just kicking up some gravel there on the inside of Edwina's as well. Jack Sharp is out there in the MR2, as is Lee Whitmore in the 350Z. That 3.5 litre V6 wails away. And Whitmore was quick in the first round. Let's see if he can get himself into the top 10. I would think Whitmore is surely top five material here in the improved class, but we'll have to wait and see. Stretches his legs towards the chicane where there's an MR2 stopped in front of him. And that's going to compromise both times. I would suggest they're probably going to get the chance to run again. Usually when your time is compromised by someone spinning in front of you like that, they give you a chance to run again. Kyle Turner is still pressing on and looking out for red flags. There are red flags around the circuit. So I don't think any of those times will count. I don't think any of the time... So, the MR2 there, just losing it under braking in the hands of Jack Snape. Kyle Turner, Jack Snape and Lee Whitmore may all get to go again, although Jack Snape, because he caused the red flag, he might not get the chance to run again. So that leaves us with a little bit of a wait until the next cars are released. The Triumph 2000 of Michael Ashley, the 211 car. Does say 21 probably in black and white, but there is an extra one just outside the white box, which is very difficult to pick up on pictures, but it is there, I promise. Uh, the Triumph 2000, as we saw earlier on, very softly sprung and it snapped on him at the Edwina chicane. 
quite a violent snap from this 21 car a little earlier on. As you can see on the pictures, this isn't exactly a beautiful day from a weather perspective. And while I shouldn't mention it as a commentator, I will say that the clouds have been here all day and I don't think they're going to leave at any point. Uh, so hopefully for the sake of everyone here at the circuit, the competitors and indeed our camera ops, it stays dry. Michael Ashley in the Triumph 2000 will be given the green to go as soon as the red flags have been withdrawn, which they should be momentarily. And off goes the Triumph 2000 of Michael Ashley, the 211 car. Michael Ashley was quite spectacular early on. Remember he spun at the chicane after the conclusion of his run earlier, which is often frowned upon. He's got to be careful. Daniel Scrace uh, also underway. Michael Ashley through the first split at Ed Wieners. Daniel Scrace in the 75 Golf. And just two cars out there. I don't think we've had three take the start. That might be because someone's had an issue. We'll have to wait and see. And a little bit of a flick of the windscreen wipers there. I wonder if that was an error or whether maybe it is starting to rain. Let's wait and see. As the Golf Mark II heads through Shaw's hairpin, very sure-footed at the hairpin, here comes the Triumph. 2000 in the hands of Michael Ashley. Quite a race modified car. Again, quite softly sprung as we can see on the gear shifts. It really does shake and rattle and roll. Ashley across the line. I'll give you the time as soon as I have it. Daniel Scrace will join him across the line momentarily. Ashley's lap was an 89.41. Daniel Scrace has crossed the line on 89.56. Next up, by the looks of it, then it is the Peugeot. Peugeot 106 of Michael Rhodes. The 106 of Michael Rhodes is underway. Johnny Holm hasn't run in his Renault 5 GT Turbo. He was meant to be next out there. Um, I wonder if something's up with the Renault 5. That would be a huge shame if so. Michael Rhodes, who was one of the quicker drivers in the first runs, he'll be looking to get through into the top 10 in this second run. There are 16 cars running in run two. The top 10 will advance. Roman Grendel, the number 66 Renault Clio is also underway and I'm starting to see a little bit of moisture and sure enough you can see that the heavens are starting to open. I've heard reports that there's rain down at the John Cooper S's. Ironically, as this car of Ian Pittman, the Mini Cooper, heads out onto the circuit, Pittman was the quickest of all in the improved class last time. Roman Grendel approaching the hairpin. Meanwhile, Michael Rhodes, again, one of the quicker drivers out there in the 106, will be crossing the line momentarily. Let's see if he can get anywhere near the benchmark. Kyle Turner at 82.27 is the benchmark. Can Michael Rhodes get anywhere near in the 106? He comes towards the line. Is it a good time? It's an 83.9. That is a good time. I think that'll be enough to get him through into the top 10, but he'll need to be faster towards the end of the day to be in contention for taking the class. Renault Clio cut car across the line in the hands of Roman Grendel. An 87.4 for Grendel. Ian Pittman. Oh, that was a bit hot, but he managed to keep it on track. 
Ian Pittman across the line. It's an 80.74. Even though the heavens are beginning to open, Ian Pittman was at full chat there. And is that some... Was there something on the side of the car there? It looked like Ian Pittman's car may have collected something. Bit of tape potentially, maybe just fixing some damage. So Luke Cunningham in the Honda EK SIR heads off. As I said earlier on, the EK I thought would be a favourite, but of course he is being compromised now by the fact that the heavens have opened. Ian Pittman still managed to get an 80.74. Can Luke Cunningham get anywhere near that kind of time? He was to me at least, a little bit surprisingly off the pace in the first set of runs. And you see there the rain on the lens uh, down at the John Cooper S's and Ed Wieners. So it's definitely getting a little bit slippery. The 127 of Peter McDonald is also out there. So McDonald never had his time registered at the conclusion of run one actually, but he is out there. Never got the time through on TSL regarding Peter McDonald at the end of run one. But there he is. He must have got through into the final 16. Meanwhile, Luke Cunningham will be heading towards the finish line. And that looks a little bit sedate by Cunningham standards. Again, I wonder if maybe that car's running a little bit wounded because Luke is usually a bit quicker than that. Luke Cunningham. His time has not come up on my screen just yet. I'll give it to you as soon as I have it. Here comes Peter McDonald through what is both the first and the final corner on this sprint layout. Crosses the line. As does the little Renault Clio. I don't think we saw much of that, but Tom Jay was out there too and none of their runs have come up on TSL. I don't think, I think maybe something's up with the timing there because none of those times have come through on my screen. And there's only one car left seemingly to run. That is, well, we've already seen this car out, haven't we? The. Uh, Lee Whitmore 350Z, and that is, of course, because his run was red flagged earlier. So they're going to send Whitmore out now to have a redo of his run because, of course, he was compromised by the red flag. So Lee Whitmore is going to get the opportunity to complete his run, or finally set his run, I should say. BMW 328i of Kyle Turner uh, did take the flag and managed to get his run in on 82.27, uh, but this man did not get his opportunity to run, so that is why Lee Whitmore is there and waiting. You can see the red and yellow flag there. That's because it's slippery surface out there on circuit now. We are at sub-dry conditions out there on circuit. A lot of these cars are running road legal tyres, but they're road legal tyres to the least strict definition of the word. They've got a few cuts in them, that's about it. So that means they're very prone to aquaplaning when it gets wet. Lee Whitmore should get his opportunity to run shortly. That car, again, strikes me as a potential favourite, but he's going to have slightly wetter conditions than he thought he'd have to contend with. 
And when he does finally get the opportunity to go, which should come up momentarily, he may be ruining the fact that his first attempt was red flagged because when he first got the opportunity to run, just behind Jack Snape in the spinning MR2, it was still completely dry out there. But now it's it's not it's certainly not wet, but I think it's on the verge of being greasy. And so for Whitmore to get into the top 10, he would need to beat an 89.56 from Daniel Scrace. Now, I reckon he can do that quite easily, as a matter of fact. It's just a matter of when he is launched to do so. And of course, he'll be saying, let me go, let me go before the rain gets any worse. But they must have a reason for holding. Quite what that reason is, I am unaware. So we continue to wait for these cars, or, or this car, of Lee Whitmore to get the all clear to run. I think potentially a few issues with the timing is what's causing us to um, sit on our hands a little bit at the moment. A reminder then that uh, this is just the start of a full weekend at Mallory Park. We're broadcasting Quick 60 for you today. Tomorrow is a rather different beast. The Retro Rides Gathering, uh, there is no live coverage of that, it's not a competitive event, um, but it is a great opportunity to see some of the most incredible historic cars, performance cars, a lot of modified historic cars uh, around the Leicestershire area for Retro Rides Gathering this weekend. It's a one-of-a-kind event and it is one that is going to be brilliant to uh, uh, to see on Sunday. I'll be here bringing you some of the on-track action as there is a, a run run what you brung hill climb kind of element to the day uh, which is always very exciting and I'm hoping to catch up with some of the guests here as well. Uh, plenty of faces from the wider motoring community uh, joining us on Sunday here at the Retro Rides gathering uh, on Sunday but Quick 60 is almost like the lead-in to the gathering itself but it is taking a whole life of its own we had the better part of 80 cars uh, set to take the start across the six classes of quick 60 
One car we were expecting to see, uh, to see was the Gobstopper 3 car, uh, the Roger Clark Motorsport entry. Ollie Clark, um, Ollie Clark in the uh, in the Toyota 86, the Gobstopper 3. That machine is uh, sadly not with us because of mechanical issues. The modified cars. Uh, Should be out there in the not too distant future, although I'm seeing some of the others lining up instead. But the modified cars should be there before too long. So it would be after after this uh, Nissan has got its opportunity to finally run, um, we should have the modified class out next, but uh, we wait to see. But for now, we wait for timing to uh, be solved, as it were. Here comes the 104 car then. So Lee Whitmore has now taken the start of his uh, redo. Uh, also, just to let you know, we have finally got the times through for Luke Cunningham, Peter McDonald, and Tom Jay. So, Cunningham, unfortunately eliminated, as is Peter McDonald. Tom Jay is through. He's sixth fastest with an 85.83. Lee Whitmore needs to be 10th place or higher to run again today. In order to do that, he needs to beat Michael Ashley in the wonderful Triumph 2000 at 89.41 is his benchmark. Can Whitmore do enough? I would suggest that both he and the car are capable. It doesn't look like it's too wet out there, so I think he should be fine in terms of track conditions. And he's strung it together nicely so far. Lee Whitmore needs to go quicker than an 89.4 to stay in it. Looking at his split times, I think he should be safe. But he needs to get through this final corner. He'll head on to the step straight. It is an 89.41 to beat for him to stay in for the final 10 in the improved class. And he goes to seventh fastest, an 85.91. So he stays in. Lee Whitmore, seventh fastest. Ian Pittman in the Mini. Kyle Turner in the BMW. Liam O'Toole, Jesse Shakespeare, Michael Rhodes, Tom Jay, Lee Whitmore, Jonathan Newbold, Andrew Mackerskill, and Roman Grendel will all go through to the next round. But now we move on to the modified class for the first time today. And we start off very, very hot indeed with a 620 brake horsepower Corvette C5 in the hands of John Edwards. Would have come with something in the range of 400 as standard, but it is supercharged. Paul David Brandrick in the Mazda MX-5, the 99 car. Well, Jeffrey Turner also out there, so it's two MX-5s up against a Corvette. On paper, that doesn't seem like a particularly fair fight, but this is quick 60, anything goes. John Edwards in the modified class Corvette will be the driver that sets the early benchmark. A big lock up and on the grass for Paul David Brandrick down at Edwina's chicane. Meanwhile, Jeffrey Turner powers by in his Mazda MX-5, that's the 105 car rather than the 115. John Edwards in the Corvette is on his way to the finish of the course. Again, timing beam is just here on the back straight and we'll get to see what the benchmark is in the modified class. Tom Edwards, uh, sorry, John Edwards across the line. And it's an 80.01, that's a solid benchmark I think. 
John Edwards with an 80.01. That's the quick, it's quicker than anything we saw out of the improved class, but not by much, it must be said. Paul David Brandrick in the 99 comes across the line now. And that's a solid time, I would say. It looked like a good run. I'll give you the exact time as it comes up on my board. It's an 87.5 for Paul David Brandrick. Jeffrey Turner comes across the line now. Jeffrey Turner with an 81.84. Paul Brandrick in this bewinged Mazda MX-5, certainly turning some heads. That is a 1994 Mazda MX-5, the car accessories manufacturer from Derby, with a solid time. I think he should be able to get a, a good time in. Meanwhile, the Toyota KE70 Corolla Estate of Andrew Shervington is underway. Quite a vastly modified machine, I suspect, this car. I, I don't think there's much stock on this. And the same applies to this Ford 100e, which is certainly not many Ford components underneath. It's a Mazda MX-5 chassis. Matt Irk in his uh, 106. Arsene Belay will also be out there in his Polo Saloon in just a few moments' time. Again, three cars running in unison. And it's the same situation here in Modified as we had just now in Improved. The top ten will go through uh, in this run. So there are 16 cars due to run in Modified this time through, and the top ten are going to move on to run number three. The Toyota powers on through. You can see there's very little in the way of aerodynamic appendages on this car, <laughs> and he's really having to fight it. He crosses the line. Andrew Shervington gets an 81.74. That is a very good time. Matter is coming around past Charlie's, past the motorcycle chicane, and across the line. What does Matter achieve? It's an 83.3. I think he could be safe with that. We'll have to see. Arsene Belay in the 92, the uh, Polo Mark II Saloon. Rounding the final turn. And we'll cross the line. I suspect he's going to be a little bit off the pace of the other two in that run. An 89.81. I think he may struggle to get into the top ten. We'll have to wait and see. Super Impreza Alex Ward now takes to the circuit. Dan Earl in the 87 Vox Lastra is next up behind him. As you can see, the Ward Impreza again, all but stock really. Even in standard trim, this car is uh, a fairly impressive performance vehicle. Rather more modified is Dan Earl's Astra VXR regularly runs in the Javelin Sprint Series. And also out there, Antonio Giovinazzo in the Alfa Romeo 155. Alex Ward hustling his Impreza around the back end of the circus as Giovinazzo starts to run in the number 101 car. does have 27 on the side of it, but it is the 101 of uh, Antonio Giovinazzo in the Alfa Romeo 155. The 102 of Alex Ward. The Scoob Impreza. Ward is certainly a very competent driver. A very much stock car, though. Can he hustle it into safety. I'd suggest you need to be in the 84 to 85 second bracket to be safe for a top 10 progression. And awards time was an 89.8. I'm not sure that's going to be enough. 
Dan Earl, meanwhile, with a 79.1 in the Astra. Dan Earl goes top. He even outpaced the Corvette. Did Dan Earl in the Vauxhall Astra VXR. Giovinazzo's car not quite up to speed, sadly. So Dan Earl a 79.19, not the 57 that you see on your screen there, but a 79.19 for Dan Earl is the new benchmark. Giovinazzo in the 101, his time unfortunately probably not going to be that fast. It hasn't come up on my screen yet, but I think it's possibly going to be an elimination. Next up, Ian Metcalf in his Fiat 500 Special Saloon. <laughs> Rather juxtaposed the Triumph, Triumph uh, TR7 V8 just behind him. The number 90 of Ian Metcalf. I've seen I've seen shorter I've seen taller toddlers than this car. It is so low slung. I um, I stood beside it earlier on and it was barely at my hip. Uh, the Fiat 500 Special Saloon is underway. Ian Metcalf in the 90 accelerates out of the traps. This car is geared incredibly short, so it gets to about 100 mile an hour very very quickly but then it doesn't accelerate anymore. He'll already probably be hitting the limiter now as he heads down the step straight towards the Edwina chicane. As you can see, that's where most of the spectators have elected to stand, with good reason. The Triumph TR7 V8 of Andrew Stevenson there, the, nine, uh, the 69 car, Tim Jeffrey is also out there in his Renault Alpine GTA LM. That's the number 96 car, a uh, big French supercar. The uh, Tim Jeffrey Renault Alpine in Metcalf in the Fiat 500 again absolutely launches out of the hairpin. That car is so light and so quick. It has a swift tune engine more related to a mini engine than anything you'd see in a Fiat 500. This car has absolutely nothing standard 500 about it really. This is a silhouette racer. The special saloons are always so beautiful and, and, and very ambitious engineering for the time period as well. This car will date back to the 1970s. Ian Metcalf comes across the line then. We'll see what kind of time he can do. It's an 83.54. That could be enough to keep him in. I think he's going to be right on the, um, right on the cusp. 10 will go through from the 16 cars that are running. Andrew Stevenson is next across the line. He doesn't have the weight advantage, but he definitely has the power advantage over the little 500 at least. An 86.98 for Andrew Stevenson. That's the danger zone. I'm not sure he'll make it through. It's going to be touch and go. He's seventh fastest at the moment. And there comes the 96, the Renault Alpine GTA LM across the line. And that time is an 89.53. Ninth fastest for now, but I'm not sure he's going to get through. A shame for lovers of French cars. And that was it, actually, because the next car on your screen is a wild-class machine. And that suggests to me we've lost a couple uh, from the modified category as the 64 Vauxhall Astra of Johnny Fletcher launches. I will just quickly tell you that uh, in the modified class, uh, I believe that uh, only Alex Ward and Antonio Giovinazzo will be eliminated from the cars that ran. That's unfortunate that those two have been eliminated, but it is now top 10 that go through. Here in the wild class, there are 12 cars running. Eight of them are gonna go through. So only the top eight in this run will go through. These cars, the wild class, again, we're another, another step up in terms of performance and modification. There's Bad Mo Baz Morris and his Peugeot 306. You've got the Astra there of Johnny Fletcher, also out on track. The legend car of Richard Brown. This is an 1800cc Rover K-Series engine powering a little legend. Of course, the Legends class cars that run in the Legend Championship are typically powered by Superbike engine. This is an 1800cc Renault K-Series motor. Uh, sorry, Renault, Rover K-Series motor. 
don't know why Renault came out of my mouth. Here comes Johnny Fletcher in the Astra. He should be a favourite in the wild class, I would suggest. Comes across the line now. And it's an 81.88 for Johnny Fletcher. Very well done. Here comes the 76 of Baz Morris. Morris with the wide-bodied Peugeot 306 rather aping the look of a uh, classic rally car. Meanwhile, here comes the legend of Richard Brown, the hot rod style machine. Baz Morris's time was 96.35 in the Peugeot. What can Richard Brown do? I don't think he's going to be on pace with Johnny Fletcher. Indeed, it's an 87.95, so he was the slowest of the three there. Top eight will go through. John Doubleday in the Ford Fraud Cortina. They called it the Fraud because even though it looks like a Cortina, the engine has more in common with something like a Mustang. The Ford Cortina runs. The 68 machine powers away in the hands of John Doubleday. Tom Moon will be out there in the 1.15 car as well, his Subaru Impreza. And as the sun starts to come out, doesn't that look resplendent? The glorious 60s era Mark II Ford Cortina will have raced in special saloons for over 50 years. Bit of a lock up there. John Doubleday last raced here at, Cab uh, at Mallory Park all the way back in 2010. I do love the roof bars on Tom Moon's 115 Impreza. Can't have an Impreza estate without roof bars, them's the rules. Eden Young in the Nissan Micra K11 is also out there. This is Eden Young in the Haltech prepared Nissan Micra K11. Uh, very, very wild under braking there. Eden Young will be a favourite. I expect Eden Young to be one of the fastest drivers out there. Keep an eye on that black and gold Micra. That car should be one of the quickest things out there, the Micra of Eden Young. Uh, John Doubleday in the Ford Fraud Cortina coming across the line now. A little bit slow through the first sector split. I'm not sure this is going to be a massively competitive time. I'll give you the time as soon as I have it on my screen. Meanwhile, Tom Moon comes around the last of the turns onto the step straight. Double day's time was an 88.3, but here comes Eden Young. Eden Young is going to be a favorite here in, the, uh, in this class, in the wild category. He will be one of the favourites, and he's about to set a mighty time, I'm pretty certain, even though he was a bit messy at Edwina's. Let's see what the time is. Tom Moon's time was an 81.93, but new fastest time in the wild class goes to Eden Young, a 79.46 for Eden Young. That is the fastest time so far. I think we could see quicker out of some of the other cars in the wild category, but certainly... A benchmark set there by Eden Young. Here comes Neil Shaw in the Audi S1, the 63 car underway. And he'll be followed by the mighty Metro 6R4 of Dr. Ian Rowlands. And this car is very special. The MG Metro 6R4, the white number 73 that you'll see on screen now. This car used to belong to none other than Colin McRae. This car is a real historic piece of machinery. Colin used it to do a couple of uh, course car runs as the number zero uh, in Scottish rallying. The M of course, the MG Metro 6R4 powered by a V6 mid-mounted engine. Ian has a famous red 6R4 that is always very quick. This car is a little closer to a road car. The Toyota MR2 of Phil Cutler is also on the run. Meanwhile, Neil Shaw is already approaching the final corner, and he just came by me at speed. Neil Shaw, I think, is going to set a new benchmark in the Audi S1. The Metro 
goes towards Devil's Elbow. Meanwhile, here comes the S1. This is definitely going to be a new fastest time. I'm convinced of it. Here it comes now. 79.46 to beat. It was mighty in the first split. I'll give you the time as soon as this arrives, but it looked jolly quick. It was a 75.32. Four seconds quicker than the Micra. Incredible stuff from Neil Shaw. Here comes Dr. Ian Rowlands, though, in the MG Metro 6R4. I don't think he's quite going to get to the time of Neil Shaw, but he should get through into the top 10 at least. It's the top 10 that advanced through. Sorry, it's the top 8 that advanced through here in the wild class. Getting ahead of myself. Dr. Ian Rowlands this time in 83.6. Only fifth fastest. Hopefully he stays in because I want to see more of that Metro. Phil Cutler in the Toyota MR2 crosses the line. An 80.71 for Phil Cutler. An 80.71. The 21 car comes out next. It's the BMW of Adrian Bradley. The BMW M3 E46. This car is a regular in CTCRC competition, in CSCC competition. Adrian Bradley in the 21 then powers away. Ronan Bradley is also there and waiting for his turn. Ben Stapley in the Datsun 240Z uh, gets underway as well. That car, an authentic Group 4 machine built by the Yan Speed operation. Built in Holland and has been raced here in the UK for many years since. Gorgeous looking car. And Ian Milford is also out there, I believe, in his Subaru Impreza. And that car, I suspect, will be quite quick. Meanwhile, Adrian Bradley comes past me in the commentary position. Actually, Ian Milford looking rather slower than anticipated, unfortunately. Ben Stapley heads out of the hairpin. Here comes... Adrian Bradley, this car should be quick, this car should be up there. I don't think it's quite going to beat the Audi S1 of Neil Shaw. But let's see what time it is. It is a... Surely a high 70, I would think, as... Through goes the 240Z. It was a 77.4 for Adrian Bradley. So Adrian Bradley will definitely be safe. He's gone second fastest. What about Ben Stapley? Will his time be good enough for him to stay in? The top eight will go through. And the 240Z goes seventh fastest, an 82.37. Dr. Ian Rowlands in the Metro is now on the cusp. Ian Rowlands is currently in P8, and the top eight go through. I don't think Ian Milford, respectfully, is going to match the kind of pace that he needs to stay in. The car is trundling a little bit. But we'll have to see what the time is. I expect, unfortunately, it might be in the 90s. It was indeed a 91.61. But here, I think, may be where Dr. Ian Rowlands' problems begin. Because this man, Ronan Bradley, is one of the quickest BMW peddlers in the country. And there's also an Impreza on the line with him. Those are two quick cars that have yet to run. Of course, Ian, to his defence, that MG Metro 6R4 has already been through drive shaft today. So I think the MG Metro is walking wounded a little bit today. Ronan Bradley, however, is out there on circuit now. The 78 BMW E36. He and Adrian usually race together. Kevin Horsley in the 142 Subaru Impreza will be the last of the cars to try and set a time in the wild class. There are... Well, they were set to be 12, but actually there are 14 uh, left in this category. So 14 cars were or have started in this wild class. And just the eight are going to go through. Seventy-eight car heads towards what is the first corner. Gerard's. Again, our finish line is between the exit of this corner 
and the Edwina's chicane. Very quick and committed. I think Bradley will have done enough. I'm afraid that the MG Metro 6R4 fans may be unhappy because I think their, their uh, favourite is going to get eliminated. Ronan Bradley has just now had his time registered. It's a 77.1. So, yes, Ronan Bradley goes second fastest. What about the Subaru Impreza? Can Richard Wright stay in it? Is that, sorry, it's Kevin Horsley. I'm getting my Imprezas mixed up. Kevin Horsley, a 76.89. Good enough for second fastest. Kevin Horsley manages to beat both of the Bradley family BMWs. I wouldn't have expected that. I think that car's a bit of a sleeper. It looks somewhat standard. Uh, it sure as heck is not. Here come the next batch of cars. We're now getting a little bit hairier still because here come the extreme class cars. Richard Wright in his Subaru Impreza is the first of the extreme class runners to get going. Uh, next up, Philip West. Philip West is running in his uh, Ford Sierra XR4 as well. So two cars with four-wheel drive competing up against each other here. The XR4 by four of uh, Philip West. Seems that we're just running two cars. I know three cars are running because Paul Wright is also out there in the 41. There is Paul Wright. But this is an extremely quick car in the hands of Richard Wright. We just saw it go through Devil's Elbow there. Uh, the 42 car of Richard Wright already heading towards the finish line, going through Gerrard's at the moment. I expect that car uh, is going to be the benchmark in the extreme class understeering quite a lot through the corner but gets the power down and what kind of time will it be i'll tell you in just a few seconds when it registers again the top eight will go through here 13 are due to run in the extreme class and the benchmark has been set by richard wright it's a 72.62 a 72 second time from richard wright is the benchmark i don't think philip west is going to get close we'll see what he can do in the 35 he's crossed the line already the time will appear on my screen it's a 78.85 what about the other wright family member the 41 of paul wright he's coming now through this corner sweeping through gerrard's past charlie's and on the step straight to the finish line paul wright will cross the line i don't think he's quite going to be up there it's an 85.66, so no, Paul Wright not quite able to match. Next up, it's Ben Stevenson in the number 31, the Nissan Pulsar GTIR. This car is a stunning silhouette machine. It's very quick off the line when he gets it right. The car is really quite incredible of course a pulsar gtir was built for group a homologation purposes and look at it firing off the line <laughs> incredible such a pocket rocket ben stevenson pressing on there chris edwards in his uh, mazda 323 gtx uh, also out there there it is this car small but mighty don't rule it out in the slightest. I'm not sure it's quite able to match to the very top at Wild, but it won't be too far away of that, I'm sure. Clive Fulcher is also out there in his Subaru Impreza. That car should be jolly fast. Fulcher, though, actually a bit slow out of the gates to my eye. We'll have to see. Fulcher not quite on the level of performance that I thought, or maybe I'm doing him a disservice because he starts to pull it through the gears on the run toward Edwina's. Ben Stevenson approaches turn one of the racing circuit. He has just a few moments to go. Oh, the bonnet is um, lifting a bit. I think he needs a pin on the center. He's got a pin on the left and right side of the bonnet. I think he needs one in the middle as well. That engine is trying to leap out of the car as Ben Stevenson fires his way towards the start finish line. What kind of time will it be? Hold fire. 72.62 to beat for Stevenson. 
I'm sure he's going to get through. It was only a 78.9, actually, for Stevenson. I'm surprised it wasn't a little bit better. Chris Edwards crosses the line. Edwards in the 3-2-3 with a 72.9. He was only three tenths off the impreza of Richard Wright. That is incredible. Second fastest for the Mazda 3-2-3 of Chris Edwards. Here comes Clive Fulcher, the 46 car crosses the line. What can Clive Fulcher do? It's a 77.05. Decent time there from Clive Fulcher. 38 car next, Ramanus Sepolis in his Honda S2000, the J Racing body kit, making this extra wide, extra imposing. And behind him is Adrian Smith in the Toyota GR Yaris. And then I think next up is one of the Nissan GTR R35s as well. So we've got a proper batch of Japanese superpower coming up next, started off by Ramunas Sepolis in the Honda S2000. This car has been time attacked. I believe it's also been drifted on numerous occasions. Again, top eight are going through in this. The wild class cars are the cars that you see on circuit, or sorry, the extreme class cars are the cars that you see on circuit at the moment. Adrian Smith and Toyota GR Yaris is next, and my apologies to Richard Turnock, I didn't spot him behind the Yaris, but Richard Turnock in the Skoda 110R is the third on the line. That car is a Skoda in name alone. It is, in fact, uh, Porsche-powered, I believe, a Formula car um, chassis in that machine. There it is, the Porsche-powered Skoda, the red and black car. I'm not sure it's going to be quite as quick, though, as the mighty S2000, which is firing its way now through turn one. Again, his time will conclude as he comes down the step straight and breaks the timing beam. Really quick stuff from Ramunas Sepolis. What's his time across the line? It's a 74.71. That's good. Here's the GR Yaris of Adrian Smith, the Fen Sport car. Just trying to find his opportunity to get the power down. Looks a little bit slower potentially through that corner at least than the S2000 to S2000 of Sepulis. But he's the fastest of anybody. Adrian Smith goes top. A 72.59 is the new benchmark. What can Richard Turnock do in the Porsche powered Skoda? I fear he's going to struggle to break the top five. He has to be in the top eight to advance through into the next round. The Skoda 110R, powered by a Porsche Boxster 3.2-litre engine, across the line now. And it's an 88.51. That's not enough. Turnock will be out. Only the top eight advance, and that time was ninth fastest. Just four cars left to run. Look at what's up next. It's Tin here in his Nissan GTR. It's roll caged, it's got some um, performance enhancements under the bonnet, but it looks rather stock. Fires away, Tin here in the 47. Can he make it work? I think he's on road tyres as well. Tin here powers away. He was followed there by Graham Martin in his Subaru Impreza Spec D. And I think that Richard West will also be out there. He is, of course, sharing that Ford Sierra XR 4x4. We've already seen that car out once in this set of runs. Unfortunately, we are missing Andy Grady in the Mitsubishi Evo 9. So this is critical. This run is the last run of the extreme class before they do the first set of eliminations. So top, te uh, top eight will go through. Tin here needs to go to at least an 85.66 to stay in. I think he can do that. Richard West out there in his XR 4x4 that he's sharing. Tin here are not quite that, not really that brave on the brakes going into the first corner, but let's see what the time is. I think he should be quick enough to make it through, but what about the cars behind him? If he's outpaced by the cars behind him, he might get eliminated. Tin here crosses the line. The time is an 84.93. The Impreza 
of Graham Martin, a 76.14. Graham Martin is safe then. What about Richard West? Can Richard West do enough to stay in the top eight or get himself into the top eight? He doesn't. Richard West is eliminated. Philip West, who he's sharing the car with, has stayed in it. So the car will run again, but Richard West will not. So Adrian Smith, Richard White, uh, uh, Richard Wright, Chris Edwards, Ramona Sepolis, Graham Martin, uh, Fulcher and Co. all remain. I'm afraid my screen is already reset, uh, so I can't bring you the full results. But what I can tell you uh, is that, unfortunately, uh, of the three cars that ran there, one of them was eliminated, and it was the Sierra of West. Well, we now move on back to the improved class and back to the Nissan 350Z. Now this car looks rather more modified than it actually is. They've only done a few tweaks like cams and things of that nature uh, to this machine. It's rather more stock under the bonnet than it is in terms of look. Lee Whitmore's 104. The Derby-based driver in his 2003 Nissan 350Z looks to be the first out there. Here comes the 104 car then, Lee Whitmore in his 105 2003 Nissan 350Z takes to the circuit. The engineer from Derby, he's changed the suspension on this car. He's got a sports suspension kit. He's got uh, improved cams. But other than that, this car is effectively a standard Nissan 350Z. It's a uh, 3.5 litre V6 engine, also found in the Renault Valsatis. Funny stat. Uh, he is running, as is Kyle Turner in the BMW 328i. This car is a favourite in the improved class. That much is for certain. Liam O'Toole could be up there as well. Now this time, there are 10 cars running. Only the top six are going to go through. So you have to be in the fastest six of this, cat of this uh, run to go through. There are 10 cars running in the improved category this time around. Six will go through. This car, Kyle Turner, is surely a favourite to go through. That 328i is very well sorted. Lee Whitmore, also a favourite, I would suggest to go through. Let's see what his time is. He comes towards the finish line now. He crosses the line. And the time is... Grace for timing screen update. An 85.27, so that's the early benchmark. I think that could be right on the cusp of top six pace. I'm not sure Lee Whitmore has done enough. Kyle Turner crosses the line, 82.03. Kyle Turner goes top. I'm almost certain that Kyle Turner will be safe with an 82 second time. Liam O'Toole in the Mazda MX-5. This car not quite as potent as some of those around him. Can he go fast enough? 82.03 is the fastest time. I think you'll need an 84 or something to be safe, and he will be safe with that. An 82.84 for Liam O'Toole. Liam O'Toole goes within eight tenths of that BMW. That was very good driving from Liam O'Toole. I think he'll be safe. The top six will go through. Jonathan Newbold in the 144 Audi TT heads the next trio of cars to go out onto the circuit. He launches it away. Jonathan Newbold in the 144 car, taking off. Really, really uh, quite uh, aerodynamically advanced. You can see the big rear wing. Also a decent sized splitter on the front of the car. Tom Jay is out there in his Clio. There is the 129 car. Of course, we now get to the end of the, uh, or to the point in the event where some of the cars that are slightly more underpowered and don't have quite as much aero may start to struggle. Tom Jay, he will be doing a lot of the legwork here as the driver. The same goes for Andrew Mackerskill, who sub, pardon me, somehow is still out there in the 133 car. Mackerskill in the polo, 
again, you wouldn't, you'd look at the car and think it, it's a shoe in to be eliminated, but I'm not so sure because Mackerskill in the twisties really knows what he's doing. The Audi TT of Jonathan Newbold is approaching the first turn at the hairpin. Here is the 129 of Tom Jay. Out of Shaw's hairpin comes Tom Jay in the Clio. The TT heading through the corner. Again, finding the point where he can really nail his foot to the throttle and power it across the line, which he has now done. Jonathan Newbold in 85.93. That puts him fourth fastest again in 85.9. I'm not sure that's going to be enough. We'll have to wait and see. Tom Jay crosses the line and he goes past the line. Andrew Mackerskill into the final corner. Now I talk about waiting for the moment to nail the throttle down and that's because if you try and go flat out all the way through here, it just won't work. You've got to try and square the corner almost, get the throttle down early without running too wide at the exit of this corner to try and get the best run possible across the line. For Tom Jay, it's an 84.28. So I think that will be safe. He goes third fastest. Andrew Mackerskill, meanwhile, sixth fastest on an 88.20. As much as I love this polo, I don't think an 88.2 is going to be enough. He's sixth fastest for now. Only the top six will go through. And there are four cars still to come. The Clio of Jesse Shakespeare is up next. Of course, this is a Mark II Clio. It's off the line. Mark II pre-facelift. X-Reg car, as you can see. Jesse Shakespeare. Bit of understeer there, but he keeps the power down. Nice run through Gerrards and Charlies. This car is a favorite, Ian Pittman. He's been quick, very quick so far in the improved category. Is Pittman once again gonna put himself to the top of the sheets? I would be hard pressed to bet against him at the moment. Pittman turns in. Looks as though just the two cars have gone out this time around. So Shakespeare and Pittman with the circuit to themselves. Here comes Jesse Shakespeare. Ian Pittman. See it three wheeling a little bit going through the hairpin. Here comes the 130 of Jesse Shakespeare. Again, the top six from this group will go through. There are 10 cars competing, six will go through. Quick 60 format, fastest 60% stay in it. I think Jesse Shakespeare should be a shoe in looking at the body language of that car. And it is an 83.89 for Shakespeare. I think he'll be safe. What about Ian Pittman though? He will surely be up towards the top. Pittman in the 34, 79.76. Ian Pittman goes fastest once again. Ian Pittman setting the benchmark then. Now we're expecting another couple of cars, I think, before the end of this. Yes, indeed. Okay, two more cars to run. It's Roman Grendel in the Renault Clio Cup and the 106 car, the Peugeot 106, uh, the mighty little Peugeot that we've seen running so well so far. So two French cars set to take the start in just a moment. Michael Rhodes in the 106 will be Michael Rhodes will be there just behind Roman Grendel. So these two cars in the improved class, they will be the last two. So their benchmark, again, top six are gonna go through here. And Lee Whitmore, Lee Whitmore, an 85.27 is the benchmark. That is interesting. I thought Whitmore would be safe, but as a matter of fact, only the top six go through. 
Grendel is a mighty peddler in his Clio Cup 200, and the same can definitely be said of Rhodes as well in the Peugeot 106. That Nissan 350Z is by no means safe. He's sixth place. He's currently on the cusp. The top six will go through. There are two cars right waiting to take the start, and I suspect that one, if not both of them, could go quicker. So Lee Whitmore is going to be waiting with bated breath. The 104 Nissan 350Z is not safe in the slightest here. Tom Jay in the Clio 172, the 129 car, the uh, dark blue and gold rimmed machine, could also be a challenger. Looks like we're getting ready. The final two cars of the 10 that are running. Let's see. Let's see. We're underway. The Clio underway. The 66 car fires off the line. Roman Grendel, Michael Rhodes, the two drivers vying to stay in it. They need to be in the top six to stay in it. The Renault Clio Cup 200, the road car of Roman Grendel. He has previously campaigned a Volkswagen Scirocco TCR powered by a Formula 2 engine here at the Quick 60 event. He's in the Clio this time. What can he do? What about Michael Rhodes? I've been seriously impressed with him in his Peugeot 106 here today. You see him wiggling under braking into the chicane. Puts the power down. There's the 66 of Roman Grendel. Oh, and bouncing across the curbs there, Michael Rhodes. He's got to be careful about doing that. Roman Grendel comes past my commentary position. He's just got a few seconds left to run. The Pug Sport prepared 139. Uh, of Michael Rhodes, the Peugeot 106. He comes out of the hairpin. Can Grendel do enough? This car is a little bit heavier than the likes of the Peugeot 106 and some of the Clios, some of the older Clios, this uh, Mark III Clio, a little bit heavier, but can Roman Grendel offset that with his driving prowess? He crosses the line now, and the time is an 85.02. Grendel is sixth. So he's going to go through, or is he? Because Michael Rhodes is coming next. He's got to beat an 85.02 to stay in for the next round. Is it gonna work? Yes, it is. Michael Rhodes with an 81.81. He goes second fastest. He will get through. Ian Pittman, Michael Rhodes, Kyle Turner, Liam O'Toole, Jesse Shakespeare, and Tom Jay, they go through. Grendel in the Clio Cup car, Lee Whitmore in the Nissan 350Z, the Audi TT of Jonathan Newbold, and Andrew Mackerskill in the Polo, they all go home. So Pittman in the Mini, Rhodes in the 106, Kyle Turner's BMW, MX-5 of O'Toole, Jesse Shakespeare in the Clio, and Tom Jay in his Clio, they all survive in the improved category. We now move on to the modified class once again. John Edwards in the Corvette C5 looks to be the first one to get us underway there. Eight cars will be taking the start here, and again, six will go through. Here comes the Corvette, it fires into life. And we are running once again. John Edwards in the big 600 plus brake horsepower Corvette C5 will be our early benchmark. He was not the quickest in this class earlier on. But as he gets to grips with the circuit and the car, he could well get better. The Toyota KE70 estate of Andrew Shervington is up next. Shervington, again, a very different car from the Corvette. He fires away. Corvette C5, though. Fires past my position. I believe that Matt Urch is also out there. Yes, there is the Ford 100E heading towards Edwina's chicane. 
Again, MX-5 chassis car, very, very potent, but the Corvette C5 of John Edwards comes around the final corner to complete his time. Will it be a sub 80 second lap? I think that might be possible. Yes, a 77.13 is the first benchmark. John Edwards set to 77. I think you'll be safe with that. Again, the top six are going through here. Eight cars are due to take the run in total, so only two will be eliminated here. The slowest two will be taken to the guillotine. Here comes Andrew Shervington in the Toyota K70 estate. He crosses the line, an 81.3. I don't know if that's going to be safe for Shervington. We'll have to wait and see. I'm not sure Matt Urch has got the pace. He looks a bit slow compared to Shervington. He comes across the line now. And the time will be an 82.3. I'm not sure that's going to be enough. He goes third fastest for now. The bottom two from this field of eight cars. The bottom two of these eight cars will be eliminated before the next set of runs. Now, what about the big triumph? The TR7 of Andrew Stevenson. The 69 car gets underway. Bit wiggly off the line. Rover V8 power under the hood. Rally spec V8. You don't hear that too often these days. Or any days, really. TR7 powers away. He's joined on circuit by Jeffrey Turner in the Mazda MX-5, the 105 car. Jeffrey Turner in the 105. And also Paul David Brandrick out there in the bewinged Mazda MX-5. Brandrick in the MX-5 continues on his way. Meanwhile, Andrew Stevenson in the Triumph TR7 comes out to Devil's Elbow. There's at the hairpin, the 105 car. Very, very nippy around that corner. Jeffrey Turner. Again, time to beat is 77.13. I'm not sure that any of these three cars can be expected to go to a 77. What can Andrew Stevenson do? He comes across the line now. Is it good enough to stay in? Again, the top six will go through. Oh, Stevenson isn't going to go through, I don't think, an 84.16 for Stevenson. What about this Mazda, the 105 car? Jeffrey Turner, an 80.64, second fastest. Meanwhile, Paul David Brandrick, the bewinged MX-5, he'll need to put a good time in here. I'm not convinced it's going to be that quick. We'll wait and see whether Brandrick can get through. It's an 83.21. So he goes fifth fastest. There are two cars left to run. Two cars left to run. And two will be eliminated. So this could be very interesting. First up, the Fiat 500 of Ian Medcalf. I suspect he can just about get through if he pushes that car hard. Meanwhile, the Astra VXR that was incredibly fast in the previous set of runs. If that car stays together, if he keeps it on the tarmac, he should be safe. What about Ian Medcalf and the Fiat 500 Special Saloon? The number 90 car gets underway. The Swift Tune Mini Engine in the Fiat 500 will be singing away. Diminutive car, lots of power, very light. Also a very short gearbox, so it accelerates like the clappers, albeit it hits the limiter quite early. What about Dan Earl then in the Vauxhall Astra VXR? Dan slower off the line than the Fiat 500. That's not a surprise, but he really comes into his own as the car begins to stretch its legs. At the split, it was a 21.96 for Medcalf, a 21.02 for Dan Earl in the Vauxhall Astra. Again, both of these drivers could be eliminated if they have a bad run here. Ian Medcalf already bouncing on the limiter as he uh, goes under the start-finish line. Daniel comes out of the elbow. Meanwhile, the 90 car of Ian Medcalf 
rounds the first corner of the lap for what will be potentially his final time. Will it be the final run of the day for Medcalf? He needs to be in the top six to survive. Will he go? He goes sixth fastest, Ian Medcalf, but the Astra is very quick. I think Medcalf hasn't quite done enough. It's an 83.73 for Medcalf. Dan Earl has already crossed the line. His time is a 77.64. So Dan Earl goes second fastest. He's actually half a second off the Corvette this time. He beat the Corvette on the first set of runs, but unfortunately, Ian Medcalf in the Fiat 500 Special Saloon and Andrew Stevenson in the Triumph TR7 will go no further. We now move into the wild class once again. In the wild class this time, we're expecting eight cars and six of them will go through. So again, two will be eliminated. Phil Cutler in the Toyota MR2, the 71 car is underway and here is the small and mighty Eden Young the Nissan Micra K11 and he will be pursued on circuit by Neil Shaw in the incredible Audi S1 two of the very quickest cars in the in the wild category running together here You'd expect the benchmark to come from one of those two cars, either the Micra or the Audi. Phil Cutler heads towards the first turn. Meanwhile, the Micra of Eden Young gets the power down. Nicely done. Phil Cutler turns into Gerrard's. Again, top six will go through here. I think Cutler has a decent shot of maybe staying in. I don't think he'll be quite as quick as the two cars behind him, however. Phil Cutler. Oh, and big sideways there from Eden Young. Eden Young going through Gerrard's very, very sideways. The benchmark has been set by Phil Cutler, an 83.7. This Micra is undoubtedly going to be quicker than that. It's a 78.21 from Eden Young. Here comes Neil Shaw in the Audi S1. Looking a little bit off pace to me, maybe. Oh, actually, no, I'm completely wrong. <laughs> Let's see what, what kind of time he sets. It's a 75.76. There's your benchmark, Neil Shaw with the 75. Next up, Johnny Fletcher in at the 64 car. He's underway in his Vox Lastra. Was Fletcher holding back early on? Was he keeping his powder dry? I know this car can be very quick indeed. Again, top six will go through here. So only the bottom two from the eight cars that run will be uh, eliminated. This was a car that surprised me earlier on. Kevin Horsley underway in the 142 in Pretzer. He was very quick. And I believe Tom Moon will also be going out there. He is out there. So Tom Moon in the 115 in Pretzer Estate. Also out on the circuit. So three cars out there again. It's Johnny Fletcher in the Astra, who's already out of Devil's Elbow now really really quick as he comes past my commentary position on the main straight Horsley very very well sorted in preps of that looked very elegant through the hairpin here comes the Astra of Johnny Fletcher then what can Fletcher do what kind of time will he set I don't think he's quite going to be there with Neil Shaw in the 75s how does he compare to Eden Young in the Micra I think that could be the big question the time is a 79.4, so Johnny Fletcher goes third fastest. I think if you're under an 80 second lap time, you should be safe. I suspect Johnny Fletcher will go through. Here comes Kevin Horsley, though, in the impressive Impreza. Horsley goes top, a 74.67. That is a real sleeper, that Impreza of Kevin Horsley. Quicker than the big, bewinged Audi S1. Kevin Horsley goes top. What can Tom Moon do in the Subaru Impreza Estate Cup? Crossing the line now, surely won't be able to go to the top. 
81.45. I'm not sure that's going to be enough to stay in. We'll have to wait and see. Oh, and I don't even know if that was an accident. That looks so pre-planned. <laughs> I don't know if that wasn't a pull of that. He could have styled that out into a donut if he really wanted to. Next up, Ronan Bradley. In fact, it's the brothers Bradley. Ronan out first, followed by Adrian. Two cars left to run. Two cars will be eliminated from the wild classification. Will it be either Ronan or Adrian Bradley? I'd be very surprised if it was. The two cars in danger, Tom Moon in the Impreza Estate, the 115, and Phil Cutler in the Toyota MR2. The time to beat to stay in guaranteed is an 81.4. We've seen both of these BMW M3s go quicker than that. Here comes Ronan Bradley. He's off the line and underway. This car was right up there. Powers his way towards the Edwina's chicane. There's Adrian Bradley in the E46 M3. That's the slightly newer of the two cars out on circuit, although I think Roden was quicker uh, in the earlier run. Both of these drivers need to stay in it. Of course, they are brothers to Damien Bradley, who will be out later on in his impressive 800 brake horsepower Subaru Legacy in the top class, the Invite class. Ronan and Adrian Bradley on circuit then in the M3s. And as Adrian Bradley exits the hairpin, Ronan Bradley is already on the verge of finishing. Ronan Bradley comes out of the final turn. What kind of time will it be? He's surely done enough to stay in it. He has to beat an 81.4 to stay in. And he does a 74.99. So Ronan Bradley is confirmed as through. He's also very much confirmed as a potential front runner at the end of the day. What about Adrian Bradley? What can he do in the E46? I'm not sure he's been quite as quick as Ronan that time. He's not. A 75.59 for Adrian Bradley. But both Ronan and Adrian will stay in. Unfortunately, Tom Moon in the Impreza Estate, the 115, and Phil Cutler in the Toyota MR2 are both eliminated. We now move on to the extreme class. Richard Wright, the early pace setter in the first set of runs. So there are eight cars running this time. Six will go through in this, in this class as well. So it's an eight car dash. There is uh, Philip West in the Sierra XR 4x4. Paul Wright is out there already, as we've seen, and Richard Wright uh, out there too. What will happen this time around? Richard Wright with an 18.5 through the first sector split, which is incredibly impressive. Paul Wright is just uh, heading towards the Edwina chicane for the first time. Meanwhile, the number 42 in Pretza is already right there towards the end. The 42 is on the money and on the pace as it has been all day long so far. Really quick car, the SCR backed machine across the line and on the grass, just about crosses the line in one piece. What kind of time will Richard Wright put in? A 72.3 is the benchmark. One minute and 12 seconds, 0.31. Philip West in at the Ford Sierra XR 4x4. He just, just got through in the previous set of eliminations. He's now got to find a time to stay in the top six to get through and run again today. Has he done enough? I don't know, a 78.77. I'm not sure that will be enough. Paul Wright, what about him? The Subaru Impreza. Paul and Richard from the same stable. 
Although I think this Subaru may be a little bit less fruity than the uh, big Impreza in the hands of Richard Wright. Across the line goes Paul Wright. It's an 85. 0.25, and I'm sorry to say, Paul, that will not be enough, I don't think. Unless there are mechanical issues or some non-starters, I don't think an 85 will get us through in the extreme class. Only six are going to make it through. And here is the car that was the very fastest of the extreme class runners just a few moments ago. The Toyota GR Yaris of Adrian Smith, the number 30 car, launches away. The Toyota GR Yaris running, I think, something in excess of 500 brake horsepower in this trim. Car was built just last year. Also, GR Yaris being used very effectively in the World Rally Championship. Also, the Super Take You Japanese Endurance Series as well. Graham Martin, the Subaru Impreza Spec D. I do like the uh, wing delete look on this car. Looks very sleek and smooth. Clive Fulcher also out there in his Subaru Impreza. And again, doesn't seem quite as quick as it looks. It looks like it should be very, very quick indeed, but I'm not sure it's as, as powerful as it is aerodynamic. Nonetheless, the Toyota GR Yaris of Adrian Smith has just come past me. Of course, that GR Yaris is only a three-cylinder. It sounds so undramatic when it comes past, but uh, it is jolly, jolly fast. The Fensport Toyota GR Yaris across the line. Does it go top again as it did earlier on? Can he beat Paul Wright? No. Adrian Smith with a 73.12. He's eight tenths off of Richard Wright. Meanwhile, the Subaru Impreza looks a little bit slow to me. Graham Martin rather sedate through the corner as Clive Fulcher approaches Gerrards as well, circulating through there. Graham Martin has crossed the line and the time is only an 81.2. I'm not sure that's going to be enough. Clive Fulcher will go quicker than that, I suspect. Fulcher across the line now, and it's a 77.2 for Fulcher. That's a really good time, actually, from Clive Fulcher. Quicker than Philip West that time. Do you remember what happened last time we saw this Master 323? It exceeded all expectations. The number 67 Mazda 323 GTX of Chris Edwards is your next car. The Mazda 323 that looks not standard, but it certainly doesn't look like it should be able to beat that GR Yaris, but we know the potential is there. Chris Edwards, a very handy peddler. Really impressive machine. You see him fighting the understeer a little, just waiting for the right moment to fully bury his foot in the throttle and launch it towards Edwina's. Here's another car that could be up there, Ben Stevenson in his Nissan Pulsar GTIR. And following him is none other than Tin here in the Nissan GTR R35. Here is underway, and here was actually a few tenths off of the, both of those cars off the line. Again, it's much heavier than those other two cars. It's amazing how much difference weight makes. This car is really fairly stock. It's got a little bit of extra power. It's got a cage, but Tin Heer's car is very much a road car built for the track rather than a full-blown competitive machine. That is not the case for either one of these two. You can see Chris Edwards with a full commitment into Gerrards. He's surely going to do enough to stay in the six. Can he challenge Richard Wright or Adrian Smith? A 72.3 is the benchmark from Richard Wright. What kind of time do we get from Chris Edwards? A 73.67. Good time from Chris Edwards, third fastest. Ben Stevenson is next. What can Stevenson do in the Nissan Pulsar GTIR? The bonnet still trying to detach itself for all it's worth. He comes across the line. The time is... A, a 78.06. That's not quite good enough. I don't think he's going to be on the cusp of elimination. Fifth fastest for now. Six will go through. Tin here, meanwhile. Looks a little bit slower than Stevenson. I think this could be an elimination. There's still, I think, one more car left to run in extreme, if I'm not mistaken.
There is one more car left in the extreme category then. I thought only eight were taking the start. It turns out it is ten. Uh, so we've had a slight increase in entries in extreme. That means this driver only has to get to sixth place or higher to stay in it. Ramuna Cephalus in the Honda S2000 fires himself away. The S2000 on the power. Quite a lot of power in this car. Heads towards Edwina's. Oh, and a lot of drifting there. I said to you earlier on, this car has been used as a drift car before. Uh, it's also used in uh, time attack style competition, sprint style competition. The S2000 <laughs> drifting away, power down, Ramuna Sepulis with just a couple of corners between himself and finding out whether he stays in it. I'm fairly confident on his behalf that he can stay in it. This car is quick, this driver is quick. Powers through the long sweeping right-hander. The time to stay in it is a 78.77 from Philip West. I think they should see a faster lap out of Ramuna Sepulis just about. He stays in by just a few tenths of a second. A 78.25 keeps him in it by half a second. Ramuna Sepulis goes sixth fastest and just beats Philip West. Philip West, Graham Martin, Tin here, and Paul Wright are all eliminated. And we will now move back into the improved category i believe in fact no this should be no it is improved i'm right the first time so we now move on to run number four the improved category back out there once again six cars will run four will stay in Again, eight cars, well, sorry, six cars will run this time. Runs, or round number four, run number four, about to get started. Again, the runs very much become rapid fire at this stage because we are now eliminating cars quickly. So then, Kyle Turner in the 140 car will be the first of the BMWs to launch away. In fact, the only BMW of the six that are starting. Again, six cars will run and four will go through. So we're going to eliminate two this time again. From here, we are pretty much eliminating two each and every time. I think that's Clark Devy's Falcon. <laughs> I think Clark Devy just crossed the road to go home. Carl Turner should be out there shortly. We'll be along in just a couple of minutes. They're just waiting for all of the cars to be ready. I think we are now getting ready. Of course, we had to open the gate there to allow Clark Devy out. So we are now going to send them, I believe.
And this is now run number four. And the car underway first is Kyle Turner. Worth noting as well that we're going to see the really big stuff out for the first time now. The Outlaw and the Invite cars will join the fray this time. So those are the very quickest cars we see this on this day at Quick 60. They'll be joining us very shortly. There is the Mini of Ian Pittman. Pittman, again, a favourite, just has to try and get through. Four cars will stay in it this time. Not sure if they're going to release the MX-5. I don't think they will release that car now. I think we may be going down to two by two runs now. So just two cars running at a time, I think. Uh, the BMW 328i of Carl Turner then, along with Ian Pittman out on circuit. Pittman turns out of Devil's Elbow. Meanwhile, Carl Turner in the 328i. Well sorted rear wheel drive BMW E36 chassis. He crosses the line now, and the time should join me in just a few moments. It's an 84.31. Will that be enough to stay in at this juncture? It's very hard to know. Ian Pittman has been a lot quicker than that so far today. I suspect he'll be quick again now. An 82.08, so yes, Pittman is the benchmark. Pittman is the benchmark in the improved class. Again, it does appear we're going back, or we're going towards two by two running now. So next up, Liam O'Toole in the Master MX-5. He is underway. O'Toole, I'd say, has been a bit of a uh, surprise package here. It's a lovely little car, but it doesn't look particularly muscle-bound. Of course, this is the improved class, which is the most stock cars out there. Um, but we are now seeing uh, the eliminations coming in thick and fast, and I'm sure O'Toole will be hoping to at least get into that final four. That car has Meister suspension, Willwood brakes, Cobra exhaust, uh, and he runs regularly in the Javelin Track Day Sprint Series. So Liam O'Toole by no means an amateur. He knows what he's doing, and he's shown it all day long in the Mazda MX-5. He's been very impressive. You saw there that Jesse Shakespeare has gone out on circuit, as has Michael Rhodes. So we are running three again now. Uh, it seems to fluctuate a little bit based on something I'm not sure what. Michael Rhodes in the Peugeot 106, the 139 car, is at the top or Elva was at the top of the uh, order, or towards the top at least, earlier in the day. Pittman with the benchmark at the moment, 82.08. Again, the top four are going to go through. So one driver will be eliminated here and now. Will it be Liam O'Toole? His time is an 82.92. O'Toole is safe, I think. What about the Clio of... Jesse Shakespeare. Shakespeare has been improving incrementally. Can he do so again? His time is a... Waiting for it. Time hasn't come through on my screen yet. It's an 83.39. Oh, I don't know if that's enough for Shakespeare. Here comes Michael Rhodes in the 106. He crosses the line now. An 82.19, so Rhodes is safe, and Kyle Turner in the BMW 328i will be eliminated. Only the top four will go through, so Kyle Turner will be eliminated. I'm very surprised. Just one car left to run then in the improved category. Tom Jay with a make or break run. He will have to beat an 83.39 from his fellow Clio runner, Jesse Shakespeare. He's off the line. The most important run of the day so far for Tom Jay. He needs to beat an 83.39 to stay in. Jesse Shakespeare on the cusp. Kyle Turner already eliminated. 
I'm surprised actually by Carl Turner. I thought that 3 to 8 I would at least make it to the final four. But it's now a question of whether Jesse Shakespeare will stay in or whether this man, Tom Jay, can make the effort. Jay heading towards the hairpin then. Nicely done. Wonderful through that corner, Tom Jay. Carries the speed nicely. Will be flat out, I suspect, through Devil's Elbow. Comes past my commentary position. We'll head now towards what I think could be the make or break corner. Full commitment Nick required at Gerrard. And he really is committed. You can see him bucking and weaving under braking. Now trying to wind the power back on. Tom Jay in the 129 Clio RS 172 heads across the line. Will it be enough? Will Tom Jay stay in or will he go home? He goes to fourth position. He stays in it. Tom Jay, the 129 car eliminates Jesse Shakespeare. Tom Jay stays in it. Very nicely done. Jay by just over a tenth stays in. He will go to run five which will be four cars and it will then be a one-on-one -on -one shootout in the sixth and final runs andrew shervington the first of the modified class runners shervington launches john edwards is lurking behind him in the mighty corvette c5 you would never expect a early 80s Toyota Corolla Saloon to battle a Chevrolet Corvette C5 in competitive action. Welcome to Quick 60. Six cars are in, four will remain. Six cars to run. John Edwards is underway. I believe we might see Matt Urch this time as well. I think Matt is going to take the start this time. Yes, he does. So Matt Urch also running. Three cars running at unison. Andrew Shervington in the 95. Certainly uh, trying everything he can to find some speed. Shervington in the 95. Heads across start-finish line towards the final corners. Meanwhile, Matt Urch Heading towards the chicane, here's John Edwards, the hairpin, probably not the section that favours the big Corvette, but now he's at the flat out fast section of the circuit. This is where the Corvette C5 makes its time. Meanwhile, the Corolla crosses the line. Andrew Shervington's time comes in now. Shervington's time has not been registered yet. It's an 81.71. That's the benchmark. John Edwards should be able to go quicker than that. We've seen him in the 77s already today. Edwards in the Corvette comes across the line. What kind of time does he offer up? He's gone quicker still. A 76.73 is his best of the day so far. John Edwards goes top. Matt Urch, I don't think we can reasonably expect the Ford 100E to be quite as quick as the Corvette, but he needs to stay in the top four to advance to run number five. He crosses the line now. What kind of time is it? It's an 82.77. He's behind Shervington. So Matt Urch very much the driver in danger. Okie dokie. Next up, the 105 Mazda MX-5 of Jeffrey Turner. Jeffrey Turner is underway in the 105 Mazda MX-5. He'll be joined by Paul David Brandrick and the Astra VXR of Dan Earl. I think all three are going to run this time, based on what I'm understanding. Jeffrey Turner, one of the quicker MX-5s here this weekend, with the exception of one that you'll see in a minute in the Outlaw category. More on that later. Paul David Brandrick is underway as well have to say I think he's one of the drivers that could be in danger here unless he finds a little bit more speed. Again, six are in, four will remain. And there is the hot favourite, Dan Earl, in the Astra VXR. It's been he and John Edwards exchanging fastest times so far. 
let's see if it happens again this time. Dan Earl under braking towards the chicane. Oh, a bit of a lock up there. He goes straight across the grass. That could be critical. Dan Earl with a mistake. One of the absolute favorites in the class. Jeffrey Turner should be somewhere close to the end. Yes, here he comes now out of Charlie's. Can he? beat the time of John Edwards. It would be a mighty effort if he did. I'm not sure he's quite there, but can he stay in it? Waiting for his time to appear. It's a 79.37 for Jeffrey Turner. Paul David Brandrick then will need to beat an 82.77 to have any chance of staying in at all. Let's see if he can do it. What will Dan Earl's time be? And will it stand after his off-track moment? We'll have to see. Paul David Brandrick with an 83.48. He's confirmed as eliminated, therefore. Dan Earl comes across the line now, and his time is a 77.74. Dan Earl goes second fastest. Of course, we saw him go off track at the chicane. However, as of what I see on the timing screen, Matt Urch in the Ford 100E, an 82.77. He will be eliminated, as will Paul David Brandrick in the Mazda MX-5 car number 99. So then next up, I believe we have the uh, the wild class cars heading back out onto circuit if I'm not mistaken yes it will be Eden Young in the 60 car in the mighty Micra will be next again six cars are going to run and four of them will stand two will be eliminated And it's a very competitive six cars at this point. You've got the two Bradley BMWs. You've got Fletcher in the Astra. You've got Eden Young in the almighty Micra. You've got uh, the Subaru Impreza that's been very impressive. And then, of course, you've got Neil Shaw in the Audi S1 as well. Kevin Horsley in that Impreza, one to watch. Eden Young, first one out there. Eden Young in the Haltech. Nissan Micra, the number 60 car, the Micra K11, powers his way onto the back straight. Johnny Fletcher in the 64. Doesn't look quite as quick as Young in the first stanza of the lap, does he? And here comes Ronan Bradley in the BMW E36. So that's our first three cars out there on circuit. Eden Young in the Micra. Johnny Fletcher in the Vox Lastra. Ronan Bradley in the BMW E36 M3. Here comes Eden Young now. Watch his commitment into the first corner. He always absolutely leathers it through that first corner. Turns in. This time a bit smoother than he was last time, but you can see the car fighting against him. It wants to go straight on. He wants to turn right. Out of Charlie's he goes towards the step straight. What kind of time will it be? The time is... I'm waiting for it. It still hasn't come up on my screen. Johnny Fletcher will cross the line momentarily. Ronan Bradley is out there as well. I still haven't had my time for Eden Young. No time yet for Eden. Johnny Fletcher has crossed the line. Ronan Bradley also coming up now. Eden Young's time was a 78.01. Johnny Fletcher went quicker. A 77.45. The Astra outpaced the Micra. I'm quite surprised about that. What about Ronan Bradley? His time will come through on my screen momentarily, hopefully. Although my screen is slow at the moment. A 74.6, I believe, is the time there for Ronan Bradley. So Ronan Bradley sets the benchmark by the looks of it. At least that appears to be the case. Again, 
I think the timing having a little bit of a catch up. Um, I think it will be a 74.6 indeed for Rowan and Bradley. Adrian Bradley will be the next one to fire off the line. Adrian in the 21. Here we go. Adrian Bradley fires the 21 car away. Adrian puts the power down and now heads towards the chicane. Here comes Kevin Horsley in the 142 car. Horsley with a good launch, of course, four wheel drive, doesn't bog down off the line. 1.6 seconds it took him to do 64 feet off the line. And Neil Shaw will be next. He gets off the line in his Audi S1. So again, four will remain from the six here. Here comes Adrian Bradley, although he hasn't shown up as running on my screen, so I'm a bit worried about that. Neil Shaw and Kevin Horsley have. Adrian Bradley out of Charlie's now. 19.61 for Adrian through the first sector split. What does he do at split two? A 74.61, that puts him top. Adrian Bradley then is safe. Who's in the danger zone? Well, at the moment, it's Eden Young very much in the danger zone, but let's wait and see what happens. Ronan Bradley's time, I think, was a 74. Uh, Kevin Horsley across the line, a 74.60 for Kevin Horsley. Horsley to a 74.6. What can Neil Shaw do? Neil Shaw across the line and the time is... a 75.23. Now, Ronan Bradley's time was never actually registered as finished when he crossed the line. However, his... First sector split was a 74.6, and I think that was actually his time. I think 74.6 is Ronan Bradley's time. We'll have to wait and see on that front. I'm waiting for confirmation. Uh, but by my, rec uh, by my reckoning then, Johnny Fletcher in the Astra and Eden Young in the Micra will both be eliminated. So then, our next cars out there on circuit are not quite there yet. So hopefully we'll be joined by, I believe, the extreme class cars in just a couple of moments. So the extreme class cars will be out next. In fact, there we see some of the extreme cars. And so the car that trundles up to the line first is Richard Wright in that Impreza. <laughs> As has been the case all day long or as has been the case in a majority of these uh, fourth runs it will be six cars that take the start 
and four will remain. So again, two eliminations on this time by. As you can see, though, we are welcoming some cars into the paddock and a Burger Boulevard van. Hello, that's a road I want to go down. Um, but we will hopefully have the gate shut shortly. And we will then allow the cars out. The rest of the extreme class should be there too. We're meant to have six. The Impreza, I believe this car, if I'm not mistaken, has previously raced uh, in the CTCRC Classic Thunder Series while it was still uh, four-wheel drive permitted. That is no longer the case. You can't run four-wheel drive in that category. Wright has uh, been incredibly quick uh, in the... Oh, and there goes Wright. Uh, I wasn't expecting him out because no one else was there, uh, but Richard Wright is running. Again, six cars will run in this extreme category. And four of them will go through. Two will be eliminated. Richard Wright has been right up there. Pun definitely not intended. Uh, he has been right up there all day long so far. It would be a mighty shock if he didn't go top four this time. Also out onto the circuit, Ramunas Sepulis. Sepulis heads out onto the circuit. I think it is just two cars running this time on this particular moment. There's Sepulis, who's been a bit drifty at times so far. And remember, he got through last time in sixth place. He has to be fourth or better to go through this time. Is this the last stand for Ramuna Sepulis? We'll find out as the session goes on. What a drift, though. Out of Shaw's hairpin. Very nice driving. Richard Wright, much more planted. But is he quicker? One would suspect he will be based on previous evidence. He lays down the marker in the extreme class. A 72.51 across the line for Richard Wright. Ramuna Sepulis is next. Holding it on the throttle. Drifting slightly wide, power down. Sepulis across the line. It's a 75.71. 3.2 seconds slower than right. Nice drift there from Sepulis, but I fear he could be in the danger zone. Again, only four will go through. Adrian Smith is the car we expect out on circuit next in the Yaris. Whether it will be two or three that go this time, I'm not sure. It seems to be a bit fast and loose on that front, but we can say that Adrian Smith will be the next. Three cylinders only, firing him away at a mighty speed. The Toyota GR Yaris launches away. The number 30 of Adrian Smith from the Fen Sport stable. Power down. Fires his way down the step straight toward Edwina's. That is, of course, also the finish line of the lap as well. Yeah, three-cylinder motor charging its way through the John Cooper S's and towards Shaw's hairpin. At least I can hear it from my commentary box, and I'm a good quarter of a mile away. <laughs> there is uh, the Subaru Impreza of Clive Fulcher. Fulcher. He could be in the danger zone as well. He's been knocking around the fringes of the top five so far, and now only the top four go through. Adrian Smith, meanwhile, has been right there at the front with Richard Wright. He's beaten him occasionally. What about run four? Can he beat him again? Adrian Smith powers across the line. What's the time? It's a 72.91, so Smith doesn't go top, but that time should at least be enough to get him through. We'll wait to see, though. Here comes Clive Fulcher, the Subaru Impreza. Bewinged as it is, will it fly across the line and net a top four result? 
across the line now, and the time is a 76.27. So Fulcher is in the danger zone. Fourth place, only the top four will go through. And these are the two cars that will challenge. Chris Edwards in the Mazda 323, which has been one of the quickest cars in Extreme so far. He launches the other car, Ben Stevenson, in the Nissan Pulsar GTIR. The 323 GTX of Chris Edwards. Now goes through. Edwina Chicane. Power down. John Cooper S is following the Edwina's corner. At Edwina's is Ben Stevenson. Out of short hairpin comes Chris Edwards, though. He's now through Devil's Elbow, even. So quick is the acceleration of that Mazda 323 GTX. Now, the time he has to beat to go top is a 72.51. All he has to do to get through into the final four is beat a 76.27. Can he do it? He certainly has the firepower. I think for Ben Stevenson, he's in a little more danger in the Pulsar GTIR. Chris... Uh, Edwards now coming across the line. What's the time for Chris Edwards? It is a 70. I'm waiting for it to come up on my screen. I'm yet to have it. A 72.74. So he goes second fastest. Edwards is safe. Clive Falter is confirmed as eliminated. But will Ben Stevenson join him on the bench? Or will he get through into the final? Oh, Stevenson doesn't make it. The Pulsar GTIR sixth fastest at 77.85. And that is the last we'll see of the perilous Pulsar. The four cars that go through, Richard Wright in the Impreza, Chris Edwards in his 323 Mazda GTX rocket ship, the Toyota GR Yaris of Adrian Smith, and again getting through by the skin of his teeth for the second consecutive run, Ramuna Sepulis will go through into the final four. So we now move on to cars we haven't seen yet today. Strap in, the Outlaw class are coming. These are the quickest cars we've seen so far. The Outlaw class, though, will be trumped by the Invite class, which will also run on circuit shortly. So we're now into the heavy artillery. Six cars are due to take the start here, although I'm not sure all of them are here. But we are due to have six run, and four will go through. So again, six cars will become four in this round. Darren Spooner in the Peugeot 205. Very little Peugeot one, uh, 205 left. It actually has a Peugeot 106 engine, albeit tuned to within an inch of its life to over 500 brake horsepower. Um, carbon fibre bodywork pretty much all the way across this car. Darren Spooner has made it seemingly his life's ambition to make this the fastest Peugeot 205 ever built. And I think he may have succeeded. I think if you put this car head to head with a Group B 205 Turbo 16, I think it might be quicker. Darren Spooner launches it off the line. Again, front wheel drive only this car, as you can see as it snakes its way off the uh, start. He loses a bit of time compared to some of the four-wheel drives on the launch. Troy Tempest offer is quicker off the line, but of course his car has less aero than this Spooner-driven 205, the Spooks Peugeot 205. That car, I would suggest, is a hot favourite to make it to the final two in this category. Troy Tempest offer 
he was rather more subtle about his uh, ambitions. I think he doesn't expect to last too long. Let's see if he can make it into the top four. Also out there on circuit. Uh, actually, no, just two cars. No, we are running all three. My apologies. Ilya Krylov is also out there in the Renault Clio that he lovingly calls Novichok. Darren Spooner in the 205 is also out there. This is the number 430 car. There's Spooner, though. He comes across the line. Oh, the Clio goes straight across the grass. Ilya Krilov having a moment there in the 430. Meanwhile, Darren Spooner will have set the benchmark in Outlaw. I'm waiting to see it on my timing screen, but I haven't seen it come across yet. He's come across the line, but I've not seen the timing screen update just yet. Croy Tempest offer, meanwhile, in the Audi S4. He crosses the line. Still receiving no time update in relation to Darren Spooner. Ilya Krilov crosses the line as well. Ilya Krilov in the Novichok Renault Clio. He hasn't even been registered as doing a lap, but he crosses the line now. Hopefully I'll get a time for him. I can tell you that Darren Spooner's time was a 74.75. Troy Tempest offer with an 84.95. I suspect that won't be enough. Now, Ilya Krilov, again, not registered as having done a time there, even though, well, we saw him out on circuit. So hopefully that time will be counted, but not seeing any evidence of it on my timing screen just yet. Underway, meanwhile, is Louis Edwards. This car, she drifts. She drifts, she drifts some more, and a little bit more. Some more tyre smoke, you say? Okay. Louis Edwards, very spectacular, as is Dimitri Shrimpney behind him. It's a BMW E36 out there, along with a Subaru BRZ. The E36 powered by a Chevrolet LS motor, I believe. It's a V8 as opposed to a straight six. It's a drift car. Watch it through the hairpin. Think Ford Escort at the Monte Carlo Rally. Oh, well, maybe not. A little bit of a drift on exit of the corner, but just trying to go for the quickest line possible, I think, potentially. Comes past me now. Proper V8 thunder sound out of that E36. Wonderful. Dimitri Shribny powers his BRZ out of the corner. Very advanced Subaru boxer engine in that car. Edwards <laughs> fully sideways once again as he comes through Charlie's and comes across the start-finish line. Is fancy driving fast on this occasion. Louis Edwards' time will come up to my screen shortly. I'll tell you the time as soon as I have it. He continues to be very exciting as Dimitri Shribny crosses the line. Louis Edwards' time was an 80.26. Dimitri Shribny, though, with a 75.83. So Shribny faster than Edwards there. Next up, as Ilya Krilov's time has just come up on my screen, so I'll cover that quickly. Ilya Krilov's time is 76.24. Meanwhile, the Mazda MX-5 in front of you is not what you'd think. It's Mantas Slegeris' incredible Mazda MX-5 powered by 6.2 litre Corvette V8 engine. 6.2 litres of American Thunder wrapped in the body of a Miata. I would say only in America, but the engine's American. We're in the UK. The Mantis Legeris driven car then snaking its way through the John Cooper S's towards the hairpin. And again, even though Mantis is a drifter and he does drift this car, he's being very much uh, clean and tidy by the standards of a drifter. He's keeping that car smooth. He's keeping the driving smooth. 
And that's exactly what he needs to do to try and stay in it. Again, six cars are running, four of them will go through. The current car in danger is Louis Edwards, the BMW E36 drifter, at 80.26. That's the time that the MX-5 has to beat. Has Mantis Legeris done enough? He crosses the line now. And the time is 76.66. And with that, Mantus Legeris has eliminated Louis Edwards. So Louis Edwards in the BMW E36 is out, as is Troy Tempest Offer in the Audi S4. So Darren Spooner, Dmitry Shribny, Ilya Krilov, and this car of Mantus Legeris will be the final four in Outlaw. But now we get to the big stuff. It's the invite class, and the first car out there is arguably the favorite, Simon Bainbridge in the SB Racing Chrono. This car, very, very, very loosely based on an Audi R8. It's powered by a twin turbo V8 engine from an Audi RS4, RS6, my apologies. And it's an incredibly fast piece of kit. Lots of carbon fibre, lots of downforce, lots of power as well. You can hear the thundering engine of that SB Chrono. The number two car fires its way out of the corner. Out of Shaw's hairpin already coming through the devil's elbow. This is the big stuff. This is the hardest of the hardware. There's Damien Bradley in the Subaru Legacy. Again, one of the fastest cars in the country at mod prod level. However, just watching it through the John Cooper S's there, I have to say it looked a little bit off pace. Damien Bradley looked a little bit slow and idle. No such problem for Simon Bainbridge, though. He crosses the line now. I'll let you know his time as soon as I have it. But what's going on with Damien Bradley. That car isn't showing the pace you'd expect at all. We've waited all day to see the Avon tyres backed Subaru legacy of Damien Bradley and unfortunately he comes across the line idling. This car is capable of so much he can challenge Simon Bainbridge on a good day. Unfortunately, the car is slow. Something is amiss. Damien Bradley can have 800 horsepower or more out of this car, and we're clearly not seeing a fraction of it at the moment. Simon Bainbridge's time was the fastest of the day so far, a 68.24. Unfortunately, David Bra Damien Bradley only setting an 82.82. I fear we've seen Simon Bainbridge's closest competitor fall at the first hurdle in the invite class. Here comes Richard White. The Subaru Impreza. This car has been in build for many years now. Richard White launches away then. The number 14 Subaru Impreza of Richard White. And you can see a lot of arrow on this car. It means business. Richard has been building this car, to my understanding, for about 15 years. And finally, it's getting a run out. Richard White has owned that car for 15 years. He's put thousands of hours into building it. It's powered by a 2.35 litre engine with a Borg Warner turbo, and it makes 860 brake horsepower at full boost on race fuel. This car, meanwhile, the RX-7. The RX-7 is uh, one of the quicker cars out there. Here, though, comes Richard White. What can White do? He comes across the line. How close can he get to Bainbridge? That's the big question. I'm not sure he's going to be that close to a 68, but he could well get into the low 70s. Let's wait and see what the time is. Here comes the RX-7, Scott Carithers, a champion in the Time Attack Championship UK. Carithers comes out of the corner. I don't think he's going to be as quick as the Impreza. 
as he crosses the line, I finally get the time through for Richard White. And you know what? I'm jolly impressed. Richard Wright's time, a 69.71. I thought Richard White wouldn't go sub 70, but he did. A 69.71 for Richard White. A doff of the cap to you, sir. Meanwhile, we wait for the time out of the RX-7. It's still not come up on my screen. Scott Carruthers' time has not come up on my screen yet. Here's Ilya Krilov. Now, Ilya again running in the outlaw class. But I'm not sure why he's lining up, because strictly speaking, it shouldn't be him out next. I'm a little bit confused as to why this car is lined up here. Because Ilya Krilov is already through, of course. However, maybe his time was discounted. I'm not too sure. Krilov's time was a 76.24. He went third fastest among the outlaws. So he should have been safe in the outlaw category. But he's parked up there as if he's ready for a run. And strictly speaking, he shouldn't be running again just yet. We're waiting at the moment. We are due to go into the fifth runs. And I'm expecting, at least I was, I'm very much of the impression that the improved cars were going to be back out next. The final four in the improved and indeed the final four in each category. Although I should say that in the invite class, uh, it's only three going through. Still no time for uh, Scott Catheters either in the number three. He was listed as number triple nine TBA for some reason on the timing screen. So again, I think we are having some timing issues here. So I'm still waiting for any news, any information that can be gleaned as to that. But uh, for now, we await run number five. Again, we await the news as to what's out there next. The number 430 of Ilya Krilov is there, but of course in Ilya's timed run earlier on, he did go straight across the chicane. So I just wonder if Ilya Krilov is maybe getting another go because he cut the course before. Okay, Krilov's time from before has now been deleted from my timing screen. So Ilya Krilov here in the Novichok Clio, I think is getting another run. So then this car, the Ilya Krilov car, it's all Kevlar pretty much, uh, the Novichok Clio. Um, in previous spec...
So again, Ilya Krilov is there. His time from round number four has been deleted. So I don't know whether he's going to have a do-over, a second shot here in round four, or whether he will be sent a packing. He did have the third fastest time, but as you may recall, he did that by crossing the grass at the chicane at Edwina's, um, which wouldn't normally be looked upon too fondly. So we all play the waiting game collectively for what is happening. You can see that Ilya has the door open. He doesn't want to cook in that car. I suppose he does want to cook in the annoying TikTok language sense. He'd like to go very quickly and be good at his driving, but he doesn't want to cook in the sense of getting too warm, at least. I imagine that a lot of the heat protection between himself and the engine has long since been stripped away. Um, incidentally, the reason that car has the number 430 is because that's the highest amount of power he can get. 430 brake horsepower if he whacks it up to full boost out of a Clio. Again, welcome to Quick 60, where things are insane. Uh, I also am now seeing the car that didn't register a time in the invite class, Scott Carrether's Mazda RX-7. That car is now lining back up again. So I, I, once again, I'm pretty sure we're gonna get a couple of do-over runs here from round four before we move on to round five. Uh, in the case of Carithers, completely fair, because his time simply didn't register. Um, which is odd, but hopefully that uh, bug has been exterminated from the system. And underway, the 430 car, Ilya Krilov goes again. Okay, so we are back into run four territory here. So even though we have had a bit of a pause, this is still run four, and this is critical for the outlaw class, because this is Ilya Krilov's second bite of the cherry, as it were, in run number four. There's Scott Carithers as well in the RX-7. So Carithers is running in invite, Krilov is running in outlaw. Now, Krilov will need to get at least an 80.26 to advance into the next round. He has Louis Edwards in the V8 powered BMW E36 drift car to beat. He did beat him earlier on, but he did so by cutting the track after a braking issue. Let's see what Ilya Krilov can do then. Let's see what Scott Carithers can do as well. For Carithers, his benchmark will be an 82.82 because of Damien Bradley's issues with the car. I think he should comfortably beat that. But what about Ilya Krilov? Here comes the number 430 car. Will Ilya Krilov make it to the final four in the class outlaw? Let's wait and see. He's crossed the line. He comes onto my timing screen with a 75.06. He goes to second in the outlaw class. He'll make it into the final four. In the invite class, it's the final three that we're talking about here. And obviously Damien Bradley's car had issues so it should be straightforward for Scott Carithers but he looks a bit slow let's see if Carithers has the pace Carithers crosses the line and his time is an 80.93 so Carithers has crossed the line and gone third fastest so Carithers has eliminated Damian Bradley Carithers eliminates Bradley. And with that, our run five orders are set. We now go right back to the beginning with the improved category. Run number five.
So then, to the improved category. And the 106 car of Michael Rhodes. Or rather, the Peugeot 106 of Michael Rhodes, I should say. We are now on run number five. And it will be a four car scrap, four very different cars, it must be said, in the improved category. Here goes the first of them then, it's Michael Rhodes and his Peugeot 106. Michael Rhodes with the USB Sport uh, Peugeot 106. Tom Jay in the Renault Clio RS172. is also underway and I think Liam O'Toole will be held. I think we're doing two versus two uh, or one versus one battles now. This is effectively the semi-final. We've got four cars running, two of them will go through. Is Tom Jay going to be able to do enough? He only got through by the skin of his teeth last time. Michael Rhodes has been a spectacle so far in his Peugeot 106. It's touch and go, I think, for who's going to get second place. On form, Ian Pittman should get through in his, in his Mini Cooper because he's been impressive. Michael Rhodes, Liam O'Toole and Tom Jay, uh, I'd say any one of those three could join him in the final. But of course, Pittman needs a clean run as well. Michael Rhodes in the Peugeot 106 comes through Gerrards and Charlies and he will cross the line, he will set the benchmark. What kind of time will it be? The Peugeot 106, car number 139 across the line. The time is an 81.63. That's a fairly competitive time. Tom Jay is next, the Renault Clio RS172. He was Half a second slower at the first sector split. What about at the final line? He's crossed the line and the time is an 83.77. So Michael Rhodes has firmly put his hat in the ring. I'd say that Tom Jay is very much at risk with an 83.77 in the Renault Clio. So that was semi-final one. Here comes semi-final two. <laughs> Liam O'Toole in the Mazda MX-5. The 137 launches away, the Javelin Sprint regular, Liam O'Toole. Fairly modified car, but it's still quite production in look, quite production in nature. That is the name of the game in the improved class. This is effectively road-going cars only in improved. Ian Pittman has also gotten underway. Liam O'Toole was quicker off the line. That, of course, mostly because he's rear-wheel drive and Ian Pittman is front-wheel drive. Pittman has been the car to beat so far in the improved category. Pittman fires through the John Cooper S's in his Mini Cooper. Liam O'Toole comes past my commentary position. O'Toole was slower through the first sector split than Ian Pittman, but his real target will be Tom Jay and Michael Rhodes, I suspect. The time to beat is an 81.63. Ian Pittman could well do it, but will, will Liam O'Toole Managed to find a way to be quicker than Michael Rhodes. It would be a mighty effort for O'Toole if he can do it. O'Toole comes across the line now, and the time will update. It's an 83.48. He goes second fastest, so will Ian Pittman do enough? An 83.4 to beat. He's been quicker than that all day long so far, and on this occasion, he is quicker again. A 79.32 for Ian Pittman. He advances to the two-car shootout along with Michael Rhodes in the improved category. Again, in run six, it will be two in each category, a one versus one shootout. And we've just determined who it will be in the improved category. Pittman versus Rhodes. On to the modified class then. Our first combatant, the Chevrolet Corvette, the 77 of John Edwards. The Corvette C5 with 620 brake horsepower. It can move mountains in a straight line. 
It may not be quite so subtle when we get to the corners, though. Andrew Shevrington with the Toyota Corolla KE70 Estate has also launched off the line. What a study in contrast this is. A 1980s, potentially even like late 1970s Toyota Estate car up against a Chevrolet Corvette C5. There's over 20 years separating them and you couldn't get two more wildly different personalities in cars if you tried. Here's John Edwards. He fires his way out of the hairpin now. His first sector split it was a 20.55. He's 1.1 seconds quicker than Andrew Shevrington in the first sector. But that first sector is all of the fast part of the circuit. Where Shevrington gets his pace back is through the hairpin that he's going through at the moment. John Edwards in the Chevrolet Corvette though rounds the Charlie's Bend and will come now down the step straight to cross the line. He will break the timing beam now and in just a couple of seconds I'll be able to tell you the time. He sets the benchmark. It's a 76.3. That's the benchmark in the modified class. What can Andrew Shevrington do in response? He would do very well to get himself into the 76s. He's trying to keep the back end in step. He can drift the car, but he's decided that's not the quickest way. Shevrington across the line and 80. 0.76, so 4.4 seconds off the pace of John Edwards. Will it be enough to get into the final? I have to express my doubts because we've got two very quick cars coming up next. Jeffrey Turner in the MX-5. He launches the car away now. I have to say, I think this car is the underdog in this situation because Dan Earl in the Astra VXR has been the only driver quicker than John Edwards so far today. Can Jeffrey Turner spool up that engine and have one last go for glory? Jeffrey Turner will be looking to try and advance into the final two, as will Dan Earl. Both of them have, off, have left the line two tenths quicker uh, off the line was Jeffrey Turner, again, mostly because his car is rear-wheel drive and the Astra is front-wheel drive. There is Dan Earl in the 87 Astra. Jeffrey Turner heading towards the hairpin if he's not already gone through it. There he is. Oh, he overshoots the hairpin quite significantly there. That was not a clean run through the hairpin in the sliders, and it didn't look like he accelerated away too well. I think he was trying to find a gear. I think in the process of outbreaking himself into the hairpin, he lost his gears a little bit. Dan Earl, much more reserved under braking, smoother line through the hairpin. Jeffrey Turner, has he made an error here? He's three tenths slower than Dan Earl at the first sector split. He comes now onto the step straight and Jeffrey Turner crosses the line. He has an 80.76 to beat from Sherrington to go second place and he does go second, an 80.26, but that's nowhere near as quick as Dan Earl has gone so far. Dan Earl needs to beat an 80.2 to advance to the final in the modified class. He crosses the line now and the time is a 77.95. He's 1.6 seconds off the Corvette, but for now he's done enough. The Astra will make it through to the final shootout in the modified class. So the extreme class heads out next. And you see there the fearsome silhouette of Neil Shaw's Audi S1. Uh, rather, I should say, sorry, the wild class out next, not the extreme class. I'm getting myself all crossed up. The wild class Neil Shaw in the Audi S1. And you see it there burst into life. The lights came on. And I suspect Neil Shaw is home. Just behind him as well, we have the, what to me is one of the surprise packages of the day. Kevin Horsley 
in that Impreza. Again, by the standards of the wild category. By the standards of this category, that Impreza is fairly tame. Neil Shaw in the 63 Audi S1 will be our first underway and he'll be joined on circuit by Kevin Horsley in the 142 Subaru Impreza. Horsley has been right there on the pace with the Bradleys and of course what's going to be really interesting is that the Bradleys are running together. Neil Shaw is underway then. Four cars are running in this session. Two of them will go through to the shootout. Will it be both Bradleys? Will it be either Bradley? It remains to be seen. So then the, the S1 heads up towards the hairpin. Here comes Kevin Horsley. Kevin Horsley in the 142 car, the wild category car. Very quick off the line. Neil Shaw was registered as being 4.65 seconds off the line. That doesn't quite ring true for me. I wonder if Neil Shaw slightly jump started because he has a 4.65 second time at the 64 foot line. And that doesn't strike me as correct at all. I think maybe he broke the timing beam early. Hard to tell from here, of course, but I think that might be the situation because Neil Shaw's first, or Neil Shaw's launch time is well off piste. Neil Shaw has crossed the line and his time is a 77.98, but that is nowhere near the pace that he's had so far. Kevin Horsley in the 142 car. He was much quicker through the first sector split. That's slow though. Kevin Horsley very slow coming out of the final corner. What's happened with Horsley? Horsley almost at a standstill. Well, I'll tell you his time across the line, but you can see as well as I can that that was not representative. An 82.84 for Kevin Horsley. Horsley was the hot favourite, and he's slowed to a crawl. Oh, goodness me. I thought it was going to be between Horsley and one of the Bradley brothers. And now he's got some speed again, but what happened? Something clearly went amiss there. And that means we now pay our attention to the brothers Bradley, Roland and Adrian Bradley. And with both drivers potentially having issues in that first run, both of the Bradleys could go through here. So Roland and Adrian Bradley are coming up. Roland and 78 is the first in the queue. Their time to beat is a 74.91 from Neil Shaw. Neil Shaw's time has just been corrected. It's just been corrected to a 74.91. So they fixed that time in, in the uh, race control because he was seemingly given um, a duff start there off the line. So Neil Shaw's time to beat is a 74.91. That's much closer to what you'd expect. Now, will it be Ronan Bradley or Adrian Bradley joining him in the two-car shootout? It is Ronan Bradley on screen. Adrian Bradley has also set off. Adrian was slower off the line than Ronan. Ronan in the E36, I think his car is a little bit lighter. Bit wide though through the hairpin for Ronan Bradley. Adrian Bradley in the 21 car. He comes through the devil's elbow now. Through the hairpin goes Adrian. Ronan Bradley needs to beat an 82 second time to go second, but he also needs to beat brother Adrian. That's the most important thing. 
Here comes Ronan Bradley in the 78. 74.91 is the fastest time of the session, courtesy of Neil Shaw. Can Ronan Bradley beat him? Yes, he can. Ronan Bradley with a 74.31. Now it's Adrian Bradley's turn. He needs to beat a 74.91 to make it through into the shootout. Will it be a Bradley brother shootout? No. Adrian Bradley misses out by just over a tenth of a second. A 75.07 versus a 74.91. Neil Shaw will go through to the two car shootout in the wild class alongside Ronan Bradley, BMW E36 versus Audi S1. Next up, we have the extreme cars out on the circuit. It's Adrian Smith who takes the track first and his GR Yaris. Again, huge power, over 500 brake horsepower from a three-cylinder engine. Smith running the Fen Sport Toyota. Here is the 42 car, Richard Wright. Now these two, I would suggest, are the favorites here in Extreme. They're going head to head now. The question is, will they also go head to head later? There are four cars running in this session, in run five. Here comes the Toyota. So again, all four cars are going head-to-head -head here in this effective semi-final. The fastest two will go through to the one-on-one -on -one shootout. Here comes the Toyota. And through it goes. What's the time for Adrian Smith? It's a 73.74. Richard Wright in the 42. He comes across the line now. And he crosses the line at 71.84. I think that's the quickest time we've seen out of Richard Wright so far. Amazing time. Ramuna Sepulis launches in the Honda S2000. Sepulis got through to the final six in sixth place. He got through to the final six by the skin of his teeth. He then did it again for the final four. He was the fourth fastest. Can he repeat the trick one more time to get into the one-on-one -on -one shootout? Ramuna Sepulis in the Honda S2000 needs to give it everything. Here comes Chris, uh, oh sorry, uh, yes it is Chris Edwards in the Mazda 323, but his, ah there you go, he's now registered on my timing screen, so Chris Edwards is running as is Ramuna Sepulis. Now Edwards could well be the spoiler here for Adrian Smith, because Adrian Smith 73.74, I think we've seen Chris Edwards beat that already, the final two will go out into the shootout. Here comes Sepulis. Can he do it again? Can he beat Adrian Smith's time? A 73.74. He's giving it absolutely everything as he comes across the line. The S2000 breaks the beam and the time is... Huge dramatic pause, a 75.1 for Ramuna Sepulis. Here comes Chris Edwards. Chris Edwards crosses the line now. The Mazda 323 GTX, a 72.1. 72.15. Chris Edwards has beat the Toyota GR Yaris in a Mazda 323 GTX. Sentences I never expected to say. Well done, Chris Edwards. Chris Edwards will go head to head with the Impreza of Richard Wright in the extreme category. We now move on to the Outlaws. Four cars again running here. Ilya Krilov in Novichok, the Renault Clio. Heading towards Edwinas. A little bit of a lock up there through the chicane. 
but very nicely planted. I'm sure he's got that boost all the way up at this point. Dimitri Shribny has not gotten off the line yet, so is it just one car running? It looks like it might be. Whether there might be an issue for Dimitri Shribny, I don't know. Shribny has not taken the start just yet, so it's Ilya Krylov on his own, and he will set the benchmark in the outlaw category. Krylov coming round what is the final corner. The 4.30 comes out of the corner. The big, bewinged Clio crosses the line, and the time is a 74.34. 74.34, Krilov sets the benchmark. So then Dmitry Shribny hopefully will get off the line this time. Dmitry Shribny in the Subaru BRZ, launches it away. The all-wheel drive car, Subaru running train. Uh, rather, it's a Subaru, of course. Impreza running train is what I meant to say. So it's an Impreza drive train. Impreza engine at a hugely um, extensive state of tune. Even though the car itself looks rather sedate, it's you know not bulging with aero and fins and, and wings, but it is very quick, as you can see. Dmitry Shribny uh, in the number seven, powering his way towards the hairpin. This car has been to South Africa in Jim Carner grid, the event pioneered by the late Ken Block. Shribney with one of the most famous BRZs in the world heads towards Gerrard's to try and beat Ilya Krylov. A 74.34 is the target here. We seem to be running one by one these days. Here he comes. Big, big power from Shribney across the line. 74.34 is the target, and he beats the target. A 73.75. Dmitry Shribney beats the Clio of Ilya Krylov. And we now move on to Darren Spooner. Darren Spooner in the Peugeot 205, the number 13 car. All carbon fibre, a car that he works on tirelessly to go as fast as humanly possible. And I would argue he has more than achieved it over the years. Through the chicane he goes, a little bit wide there, but just about keeps it on the kerb. It what runs a six-speed Quaife gearbox, sequential box. Carbon fibre, everything. A 1.6 litre Peugeot engine, very loosely based on the 106 motor, but it runs over 500 brake horsepower. This started life as a 205 1.9 GTI. It's a lot more than that now. He's got the benchmark to beat of a 73.75. Two cars will go through in the outlaw class to the two car shootout. Will one of them be Darren Spooner? We see him across the line now, and the time is a 74.1. So he's outpaced by Dmitry Shribny. That's a mighty effort from Shribny. Darren Spooner, just a few tenths off the pace there of Dmitry Shribny, but Spooner came in as the favorite. Now, what about this car? I would call this one the wild card. It's the 72 of Mantis Slogeris, the 6.2 liter V8 powered machine. It's a Mazda MX-5 in body shape. It's a Mazda MX-5 in chassis. 
It is actually an MX-5 chassis, I checked earlier on, but it slides a lot because it's got a 6.2 litre V8 under the hood. This car is primarily used for drifting, but he's got big, wide tyres on it today to try and go as fast as possible around the Mallory Park circuit. A lap and a third of the circuit will determine whether he gets into the final shootout or whether he has to go home early. Mantis Lodgeris comes past my commentary position. He's already through the devil's elbow. He heads towards the first corner now at Gerrard's. The time for him to beat to get into the shootout is a 74.1. He's quicker in the straights, I'd reckon, than Darren Spooner. He's got rear wheel drive. I think he's got a slightly more performance uh, chassis underneath him, but will it be enough? He now comes across the line. What's the time for Mantis Lugeris? It's not enough. A 75.35. He is eliminated in the outlaw class. It will be Darren Spooner versus Dimitri Shribny in the two car shootout. As you can see, no cars just yet but we will see our next categories out there very shortly. Have we got any others left to do an elimination? The invite class and uh, just the invite class, actually, I think, left. Three cars should be due out in the invite class to determine who is in the two-car shootout there. If you're just joining us here at Cadwell Park, if you're just joining us on the Hill Climb Monsters YouTube channel, welcome along to Quick 60. The format here is simple. The fastest 60% of each category go through to the next round, and you join us now at the sharp end. We're effectively at semi-final point here. We're determining the final two in each class. And I think there's only one class left to make that process with, and it is the invite class, which is for the very fastest cars here on an invitational basis only. The three competitors I'm expecting to see are Simon Bainbridge in the SB Racing Chrono, Richard White in the Subaru Impreza, and Scott Carithers in the Mazda RX-7. They're the three cars we're expecting to see. I think I just called it a different park. This is Mallory Park. I do have a horrible habit of getting my park tracks mixed up, uh, but we are here at Mallory Park. Easily done, says the director. I beg to differ, I should know. I did walk by a sign. I can see it on screen, it says it like twice. But uh, we are here at Mallory Park. This is a circuit that uh, Especially in this configuration, I think is a really good balance for the different types of cars. You've got that chicane down at Ed Wiener's, which makes it a bit less high speed than it is uh, in non-chicane configuration. Obviously, the John Cooper S is a good test of handling. You've got the hairpin there as well, uh, which you see on screen at the moment. It's not a slow circuit by any means, no, sorry, but, uh, but there are sections of this track uh, that benefit the cars well, that are more geared, so more built to towards right handling.
So then, I understand that our sixth and final runs here. So sixth and final runs are coming up. I understand that two of the cars, uh, or one of the cars is maybe not taking the um, fifth run in invite. So they've whittled down to the final two. One thing I like about Quick 60 is the variety of different machines we have. I mean, we've had so many historic cars here today. We've also got some of the uh, some of the very fastest turbocharged cars. You've got huge V8 powered machines. You've got uh, you've got hooligans. You've got perhaps reformed hooligans out there on the circuit. Four-wheel drive, two-wheel drive. And of the two-wheel drive, both front and rear. And we're going to see a little bit of everything in the next few minutes. I think the improved class cars are the ones we expect to see next. And that will happen very shortly. So we will see the cars very shortly, I suspect. But do stay with us here, because we are at the very close of the day here for Quick 60. From here on out, it's two car shootouts. There is a jackpot on the line in each category as well. 250 pounds per class winner here. So they are not just racing for glory, they are racing for a little bit of cash as well. 250 pound cash prize in each of the six categories. So the improved class cars are just starting to show up. You can see the Peugeot there of Rhodes and the Mini. They're in assembly area. So I think we are just a few moments away now from getting the first of our two car shootouts underway. Maybe 45 minutes, maybe half an hour. You need wishful thinking. <laughs> it hasn't rained on you, we're welcome, it's a small shower. Yeah, understood, I'll sort it, don't worry. So then... Yeah, should have sorted it now. We are confirmed also that we are going one by one in this shootout. So each car will go out individually, no track sharing. And I'm a bit scared of what I'm seeing there in picture because the 106 has its bonnet open. Hopefully that's just cooling. Hopefully there is nothing wrong with Michael Rhodes' 139 car. Oh, and I think he just gave a thumbs up. So I think I think he's saying the car's good. Yep, yep, he's giving a thumbs up. Okay, just keeping it cool. I like that. Thank you, Michael, for putting me at ease. The improved class cars are there. We can see the extreme class cars also there because we just saw the uh, 42 Subaru there as well. Yeah. 
So Rhodes should be out there shortly. I think we should see the improved cars first. I believe that's the way we're doing it. I think we're just awaiting all confirmation to make sure all of the right cars are invited back to us. So money on the line, £250 per class winner here in the shootout sessions. Six classes. So money on the line, as well as pride and glory. The Quick 60 event definitely gaining popularity. I said this as I came into the Mallory Park site today. The campsite here today at Mallory is a lot more full than it has been in pre or than it was last year on Saturday morning for the quick 60 event of course tomorrow it's a very different matter uh, when we come to the uh, retro rides gathering itself we'll have all sorts of incredible cars on demonstration runs around the circuit at Mallory tomorrow You see there are a couple of cars taking the opportunity to exit Paddock. I believe... I believe that uh, some movement is now being made at assembly. Cars are being waved in the direction of track. So I think it's time for the shootouts. And in the first of our two shoot, oh, in the first of our six shootouts, it'll be Michael Rhodes in his Peugeot 106 up against the Mini Cooper of Ian Pittman. So a hot hatch of the 90s up against a hot hatch of the late 2000s. So far today, the Mini has been quicker. Ian Pittman has long looked like the hot favourite here in the improved class. The improved class is our base level class for the least modified, least extreme cars here. However, they are still very impressive. That diminutive Peugeot 106 has really shown itself to be quick today, but Ian Pittman has been that little bit faster all day long. Then you've got the duel of different General Motors products coming up behind them as well. Astra versus Corvette. There goes the Peugeot 106 though. Michael Rhodes is underway for one last time. Can he best the time of Ian Pittman here today? The Peugeot 106. Heads its way down towards Edwina's. Bit of a lock-up under braking there, just about gets to the corner, but that was a bad run through Edwina's. Was too quick on entry, had to really check up halfway through the turn. I think that mistake may have cost Michael Rhodes because Ian Pittman has scarcely put a foot wrong so far today. Nonetheless, Michael Rhodes keeps pushing the USB Sport Peugeot 106. Huge revs as they come through the devil's elbow. Michael Rhodes with a little 106 GTI. That's the same base engine as is in Darren Spooner's Spooks Peugeot 205, albeit this is a lot closer to original. Here comes Rhodes. Is it a road to glory for Michael? He comes across the line in the 139 and it's 
Just updating on my screen now. Let's see what the time is. Still not come up on my screen. I'm willing the timing screen on to let me know how he did. An 82.23. 82.23 is the time for Ian Pittman to beat. And Pittman launches the mini. He's underway. 82.23 is the time to beat for Ian Pittman. He has been in the 82nd bracket at various points today. So on paper, he should be able to do this. But are the tyres worn? Will he make an error? It's certainly not a guarantee just yet. He's smoother, it must be said, through the chicane. Was a bit leery on corner exit. Pittman heads towards the hairpin now. Power down. Towards the devil's elbow. And here comes Ian Pittman. Comes towards the first corner of the lap, Gerrard's. It's usually the opening corner. It is the opening corner today, but it's also the last turn. Pittman having to battle the understeer. Power down, comes across the line. Pittman needs to beat an 82.2. Has he managed to do it? Again, I wait for the timing screen to tell me the story. He's done it, a 79.48. Ian Pittman has managed to go sub 80 seconds. He's managed to go quicker than Michael Rhodes. He laps Mallory Park quicker than anyone else in the improved category and he will take a 250 pound jackpot from the weekend. Prize money, not often a matter in the club racing fraternity these days. So it's good to see the fastest drivers rewarded. Here's Dan Earl in the 87 Vauxhall Astra. This is the modified class shootout. It's a Vauxhall Astra VXR against a Chevrolet Corvette C5. And a couple of times today, Dan Earl has managed to go quicker. So while on paper, you'd think the Corvette would be quicker, Dan has been impressive. He goes a bit wide there out of Edwina's. Collects it up nicely though. That shouldn't cost him too much time. He goes through the John Cooper S's towards Shaw's hairpin. The car appears. Nicely on the apex there, took that line just about as tight as humanly possible, gets the power down once again in the 87 Astra, through the devil's elbow. Now the long run down the straight. This is where the Corvette will make its time up on Dan Earl. So he needs to be quick at each and every corner, including this last one. He tips it into Gerrard's. He's three wheeling. Can, can he do enough now? I'm expecting this time to be a 76, maybe a 77. Dan Earl across the line now. What is the time? It's a 77.17. So he sets the benchmark in the modified class. John Edwards has already done a 76 today. So let's see if he can do it again with the pressure on. Here comes the Corvette. The big Chevrolet Corvette C5 up against the Astra. This car is a lot more standard in nature than the Astra. Yes, it's got 620 brake horsepower from the supercharger, but in terms of suspension, chassis, it's all very much standard. It's a road car with some performance bits on it, rather than something that's been rebuilt entirely for racing. Can John Edwards use that power advantage to top the session? Dan Earl has proven quicker a couple of times, but John Edwards has beaten that benchmark from Dan Earl a few times so far today already. He just needs to get another 76 on the board. It's a 77.17 to beat for John Edwards. He unleashes the 620 brake horsepower as he comes past my commentary position now. First corner. 
through Gerrard's and Charlie's. On the step straight, he will find the timing beam. It's a 77.17 to beat for John Edwards. And the Corvette does a 75.44. John Edwards crosses the line to take the modified shootout. 250 pound prize in his favor. And we go from modified to wild. It's Neil Shaw versus Ronan Bradley. Audi S1 versus BMW E36 M3. Shaw with a good launch. 1.63 seconds to 64 feet. Neil Shaw fighting a little bit of understeer through this latter phase of the corner, but manages to keep the power down on the run towards Edwina's. You can see him tapping the brakes there. I think a little bit of trail braking. Now puts the power down again through the John Cooper S's. Neil Shaw towards the hairpin. He will be setting the benchmark here for Ronan Bradley to come. This car is very much built for time attack competition, shootout competition. He races the clock on a regular basis. For Ronan Bradley, this isn't quite as common turf for him. He is used to racing. Can he... Can he try and match Neil Shaw? Neil Shaw takes a wide line through Gerrards, sets himself up very nicely for the step straight. He crosses the line and the time is... Again, I wait for the timing screen to update with eager abandon. 73.87 for Neil Shaw. He sets the benchmark for Ronan Bradley to beat. I'm trying to think back to the previous sessions. I'm not sure we've seen anything better than a 74 out of Ronan Bradley today. So this is really a big moment for Ronan Bradley. Not only is this about beating Neil Shaw, you could argue it's also about family honour. His brother Adrian already eliminated from the wild class. In the invite class, Damien Bradley's massively fast legacy has unfortunately suffered an issue and won't be out there in the final. So Ronan Bradley is the only Bradley family member with the chance of taking a bow today. 73.87 is the target. This is a very well-suited car. It races in national saloon car competition across the country. That was a wide line with the lockup, but he actually managed to carry the speed quite well in spite of it. Bradley comes across the line. He's got less power than the Audi S1. He's running less than 400 brake horsepower from this straight six in the E36 BMW. The chassis is very well balanced. Here comes Ronan Bradley. Has he managed to do enough to stave off Neil Shaw? 73.87 is the target, and he doesn't quite do it. A 74.50 for Ronan Bradley. So it's Neil Shaw who takes the gong in the wild class. We take another step up now to the extreme category. Your two combatants, the Subaru Impreza of Richard Wright and the surprise package of the day, the Mazda 323 GTX of Chris Edwards. I know it's not the first time I've called that car the surprise package. I'm fairly sure I said something similar last year, but that Mazda 323 always impresses. Richard Wright, though, off the line. He's got four-wheel drive in his favor. This is a very, very well-sorted car in the hands of Richard Wright. I believe this Impreza has been on the scene one way or another for somewhere around the margin of a decade. Richard Wright under braking into Edwina's. A little bit of grass there. You can get away with that with four-wheel drive, though. Really fires himself out of the corners. It's the acceleration out of those low-speed sections of the circuit, such as the chicane, such as Shaw's hairpin that I think really set this car apart. Chris Edwards is uh, 
in a front-wheel drive car, of course, that might be where he struggles in comparison to the Subaru. Richard Wright now comes through the final corner, which also, of course, is the first corner. It's Gerrard's. Past Charlie's he goes, onto the straight. Here comes the timing beam. He'll cross the line now, and I'll get the time up in just a few moments. It's a 71.85. That's the benchmark for Chris Edwards. And I will say, I think it's doable for Chris. He's been in the 72s today. A 71.85 might be possible for the little Mazda 323, which is set off now. And a very good launch, actually, from the Mazda. So Chris Edwards, with tuned on the side of that Mazda 323, I think that's a conservative description of what he's done to this car. You can see the difference, understeering, really struggling to get the power down, and then it's an absolute rocket ship on the run towards the chicane. Has he got the braking right? He locks up a little bit, but he gets it turned in. Nicely managed from Chris Edwards. That was looking very quick to me on corner exit as well. He now approaches the hairpin. Let's see what his run is like through there. He's locked up once on this lap. He doesn't lock up twice. He actually carries the momentum brilliantly through the hairpin. And goodness me, you saw how that car slid out there. Edwards in the 323 GTX. Chris Edwards has just one corner left at Mallory Park. The time is a 71.85 to beat from Richard Wright in the number 42 Subaru Impreza. Here comes Chris Edwards. Drifting through the turn. Comes across the line. Can he beat the Impreza? No, not quite. A 72.32 for Chris Edwards. That car looked rapid. That was full commitment from Chris Edwards. I'm convinced he took everything he could out of that car on that run. But Richard Wright proved to be just that little bit quicker. This, I think, could be one of the more interesting battles. Darren Spooner versus Dimitri Tribney. Spooner has been quick today. I don't think he's quite got everything out of this car, which has only just been rebuilt and refettled again. The Spooks Peugeot 205. It's built for sprints and hill climbs. Dimitri Shribny's car is more built for Jim Carner and uh, more entertaining driving, but he's very quick as well. Darren Spooner through the John Cooper S's. He will set the benchmark for Dimitri Shribny. These two have exchanged the quickest time a couple of times today uh, in the outlaw category. So now we're in the outlaw shootout. It's everything. It's all or nothing. Darren Spooner comes through the devil's elbow onto the main straight. He will set the benchmark for Dimitri Shribny. He got a 74, a low 70, or a low 71, I think, actually, in the previous run. Let's see what kind of time he can get this time by. Spooner, power down. What can the 205 do? It's a 73.66. That's not necessarily... I don't think that's the quickest time he's set today. I think his last time was a 74. I think I was right the first time in the uh, four-car shootout. I think he did get a 74, so he's gone quicker. Can Dimitri Shribny best that time, though? This is the Outlaw Shootout at Mallory Park, quick 60. And Dimitri Shribny has Darren Spooner to beat. A 73.66 for the Impreza BRZ Hybrid. It's a BRZ in chassis. It's an Impreza in drivetrain. And it's a very powerful car. Dimitri Shribny heads towards the chicane. Puts the power down, nicely done. Didn't look too tidy through the chicane, but he carried decent speed. Heads towards the hairpin now. Shaw's hairpin is a place where Shribney should make up time. Again, he's got rear wheel drive. He's got all wheel drive, I should say. Spooner is front wheel drive. 
So Shripney launches himself out of that hairpin quick. You see him breaking there uh, for the Devil's Elbow. Of course, he's not got much arrow in his favor. He's not got a lot of downforce. So in the corners, it may be costing him a little bit versus Spooner. He beats him in the final four. Can he beat him again in the shootout? Dimitri Shripney out of Charlie's and across the line now. Can he do it? It's a 72.69. Dimitri Shripney has done it. He goes almost a second quicker than Darren Spooner to take the 250 pound jackpot and the win in the outlaw class. Just one more shootout to go. And it's the top class, the invite category. Dimitri Shripney, our winner in Outlaw. Richard White will be the one to set the benchmark in the invite class shootout. It's Subaru Impreza versus the SBR Chrono. This car has been underbilled from Richard Rock White for 15 years. He has barely done any competitive running in it. He's been building it for 15 years. And finally, the beast is unleashed here at Quick 60. Richard White will be looking to make a statement here. What a statement it would be on the hill climbing and sprint racing scene to outpace Simon Bainbridge. Very few people can say they've done that. That's what he's looking to achieve today. Richard White has been a few tenths off of the SBR Chrono so far. Can he find a little more out of the Impreza now? He comes across the line and the straight line speed is immense for Richard White. He heads into the first corner of the lap, which is also the last corner, through Gerrards. And now spooling up that turbo. 800 horses across the line. Does he take the win? Or does he take a good time, I should say? It's a benchmark that he's setting, and it's a 68.62. That's a good benchmark, a 68.62 but I believe we've seen Simon Bainbridge go quicker today. The question is, can he do it again in the shootout? So this is now the drive for victory in the invite class. Here goes Simon Bainbridge, the SB Racing Chrono, very, very loosely based on an Audi R8. It's an Audi RS4 twin turbo engine under the engine cover. This car is built for speed. It's built for sprint racing. It is one of the quickest tin top cars in this country. Simon Bainbridge looking to make his mark on Mallory. He's got Richard White to beat. He's got a 68.62 to beat. He was slower in the first interval. He was half a second down at the first interval. Richard White was a 17.6. Simon Bainbridge was an 18.1. But here comes the power. Here comes the superior chassis dynamics of this purpose-built race car. Bainbridge should have had a little bit more speed down the straight. He should be quicker through this fast sweeper as well. Is it enough for Bainbridge to win? A 68.62 is the benchmark for Bainbridge. He crosses the line. He breaks the beam. It's a 67.29. He takes it by 1.4 seconds. He was half a second slower at Edwina's at the chicane, and he found 1.4 seconds. In fact, he, be, he found 1.9 seconds in the latter two thirds of the lap. That was incredible from Simon Bainbridge at 67.29. He takes the bacon here today at the Mallory Park circuit. Quick 60 is over for another year. And that car, Simon Bainbridge and the SB Racing Chrono have really proven to be something spectacular.
So then what will happen now is we try and go down and grab some interviews if at all possible. Uh, so I will go silent for a few minutes because of course I need to go down there and do that. But uh, we will yep. now go down there and see if we yep. can catch yep. some reactions after a really spectacular run here at Quick 60. We've seen the shootouts won. We've seen another spectacular performance from Simon Bainbridge.
Well, it's windy here at, at uh, Mallory Park, as I can now attest to outside my commentary box. We have though been blown in the direction of our winner, Simon Bainbridge, uh, in the SBR Chrono. I was rather amazed by your run, because in that first sector split down at the chicane, you were half a second off of the yeah. Impreza, and you managed to find 1.9 seconds in the latter half of the lap. Yeah, basically, um, it was not a fantastic start for me. Uh, obviously, I always give something around the start line where they've been two-wheel drive. Uh, and then going into the chicane last time, I outbroke myself almost. So I was a bit gingerly into there, so I lost a bit more. And then I actually, it was a bit scruffy really. Then coming out of the chicane before going up the hill, um, I completely missed my, missed my line. It wasn't great. And then I thought, right, let's just concentrate, get your head down. And I just carried, tried to carry more, more speed down the hill and round that top corner. And fingers crossed it obviously came good. So. Yeah, happy with that in the end, yeah. Yeah, it looks super planted through Gerrard's through the first corner. And I mean, we make jokes about, well, we've made a few jokes about the wind, a few allusions to the wind, but I imagine in a car this light, this aero-dependent, you are noticing the fact that you've got the wind. To be honest, it's not too bad. I mean, it's a relatively heavy car compared to what I compete against, the lightweight single-seaters. Mm. It's obviously doing quite a lot of aero, so when you're doing, I don't know what you're doing, 100 mile an hour or whatever you're doing around there, it does it does help, help keep it down. To be fair, I've been on old tyres all day and they're completely shot so we put the new ones on just to see what they like tomorrow I'm at Chelsea tomorrow uh, and they weren't great in the first lap they're a harder compound but then when they started to come good when it counted obviously we got the grip at the end and uh, Obviously, we found, I don't even know what the time it was, but we obviously found what we needed to, so yeah. <laughs> 67.2, I think it was at the end there. Yeah. Um, but brilliant performance. We'll let you go because you're not done with this weekend. But thank you again for supporting Quick 60 yeah, and I mean, joining us. Just very quickly, I'd like to thank all my competitors and Marshall. Everybody's here. Absolutely brilliantly run, friendly event, very laid back. And uh, yeah, look forward to the next time. And it's just starting to spit with rain, so that was a well-timed shootout, wasn't it? Okay. We're going to go around now and try and find some other people to talk to, so we'll do some walking and talking. But thank yeah, you, Simon, yeah. uh, for chatting to us. Uh, there is a podium presentation eventually, but I think it's going to be a little while. So what we'll do in the meantime is I'll go around, I'll find as many people as I can to speak to. We'll try and find a couple of winners. But let's just try and capture some of the atmosphere, yeah? Because there's some incredible atmosphere here at the Quick 60 event, part of the... Uh, uh, retro rides gathering weekend and uh, I will if I can even though he's got a table in hand and a racing driver with a table can be dangerous I will try and get hold of Darren Spooner if that's okay with him nice. Darren obviously we ended up in the runner-up spot today that's right, we we're yeah. talking yeah. earlier on about how you know you've done a lot of work with the car yep. it's very much a work in progress what feedback has have you been given from that day absolutely loads um, the the front end of the car was very vague it's been very vague all day um, the drive shafts are a little bit too short for the box at the moment right. so um, we had to take uh, to wind the drive the, the wishbones in a little which has taken quite a lot of the camber and the front geo off the car so I came in knowing that um, so the front end of the car has been quite washy all day um, I think that was really all that's cost me a little bit of time but you know considering how much has changed and how different the car felt um, we've improved by decent amounts all the way through today's mm. sessions um, I think finishing on a 73.6 which is which is well inside the top 10 and, yeah. and I think possibly even a top 5 so Considering I've driven it for five minutes since we've um, since it's been out for a year, um, you know, I genuinely think that that's that's pretty good going, and yes. I'll, I'll take that. The, the win, you know, the win is the win, but um, the constant improvement. We've got absolutely no damage. Nothing went wrong. Everything ran flawlessly. It's it's a good day. Ninety nine times out of a hundred, if a racing driver tells you he's driven it for five minutes, he's lying. That's accurate. That, <laughs> that is, is true. Actually true. Yeah, that is actually true. Yeah. So yeah, five five runs of seventy seconds we've done today. So um, yeah, not bad. Not not bad at all. No, very, very happy. Well, we'll let you head on home, but thank, uh, you, thank you again for supporting Quick 60. I hope to see this You're car welcome. again soon. Lovely to meet you. Thank you, Great mate. Job. Thank Cheers. You. Have a good day. Right, what we'll do now is we'll continue on down the paddock. Dimitri Shribny should be somewhere around here. Obviously, that was the car in that duel with the 205 earlier on. So we'll try and find that number seven car. I'll also go to John Edwards in a bit because he's there with the big Corvette. We're going to try and catch as many relevant drivers as possible here. As you can appreciate, a few of the teams 
wanting to get home, frankly. You heard as well, Shelsley Walsh are running tomorrow, so a few of the teams here at Quick 60 today have obligations tomorrow as well. Uh, the number seven car is stationed somewhere around here. If we don't catch him, we'll catch someone. All sorts of exciting cars around the paddock, if you don't mind me just having my phone out on camera, just so I can catch all the winners' names so I don't miss anything. Let's try and get Richard right if we can. Uh, in fact, no, there's Dimitri. This is very well. Uh, Dimitri Shribny, if we can go to your car, we'll grab you for a quick interview with a little bit of a nice backdrop. Okay. Apologies for that. Uh, Dimitri, uh, we've spoken about this car before and uh, Obviously, you've alluded to it. Your race suit alludes to it. Jim Carner grids. It's not really built for flat out racing around a circuit, but you, you seem to be able to do it well. Um, I think I always say like it have to be the well set up car and also the gasket, which sits between the steering wheel and the driver's seat. Mm. And apparently the combination of both made the thing work for all of us. So yeah, I'm happy with that. So. It's a lot of things to improve and yeah, just thanks to Scooby Clinic and all my sponsors who obviously helped to build the car and look after it and today winning here at Mallory Park, um, it just, I think, uh, a good result of uh, hard work for many, many years. And to my understanding, while I'm looking at it and going, oh yeah, Subaru BRZ, it's 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 very much in pretzel link downstairs, isn't it, under the drivetrain, powertrain? It is, yes, it's uh, basically... <laughs> Uh, pretty much an Impreza running gear with the EJ series engine, uh, but it's not a lot of power. You would be surprised. It's only running like 412 bhp at the crank, but it's still very torquey with a 500 foot-pound of torque, mm. which is explains the very rapid launches and uh, quick gear changes through the Samsung sequential, which is a short ratio gearbox. So, and yeah, as I say, combination of things. That's what it's matter. It's a fabulous car. It is getting wet. I will leave you to pack up, but uh, good job, Dimitri, and thank you for supporting Quick 60 again. Hope to see you again soon. Definitely. Thank you. Excellent. There you go, Dimitri Shribny winning that outlaw shootout. Now, I think I saw Richard Wright somewhere. I also saw him run away. If, you could, if, if I could have him, that would be amazing. Richard Wright is, uh, of course, the driver of this car in the extreme class, this uh, Subaru Impreza. Very quick car today. In fact, his car was quicker, funny enough, despite being in the extreme class, he outdid the outlaws uh, in the terms of the overall standings. Uh, so let's talk then, because, I mean, you had some tough competition there from maybe a slightly unexpected package. You see yeah, a Mazda 323 yeah, yeah. in an Impreza and think, well, I'll have him, but it wasn't an easy day. Well, we know him quite well, because we, <laughs> we do the sprints yes. with him, but to be fair today, he was, he was on it. Mm. He was on it, he was flying today. And now tell me a bit about this car. Is it, uh, how long has it been in your hands? I'll have owned it now five years, five or six years. Right. Did it do CTCRC before? Yeah, it did, yeah. Right, it is yeah. the car I thought it was. It was Vaughan Fletcher's, um, then we bought it through Scooby Clinic. Um, they do a lot of the maintenance on it, mm -hmm. look after it for me. Yeah, stunned us proud today. Mm. It definitely has. I mean, obviously the weather has just turned in what would have been your favour, apart from the slick tyre bit. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, this is such a well-sorted car. I mean, when you took it on, I mean, it had won championships in CTCRC, but how much have you done? We've done a fair bit, to be honest with you, because our discipline is different for the sprints. So we've gone sequential box, paddle shift. <laughs> Good job at showing the wipers today. <laughs> yeah, we've done, we've done a fair bit with it. We just need to get now the next thing is to get some weight out of it. She's right. very heavy. Yes. But that's winter project. Excellent. There you go. That's what we'll uh, look forward to seeing the uh, the fruits of that labour at next year's Quick 60, no perhaps. Thank you very much. Thank you, my friend. Thank you. Okay, I think we're going to have to cut. I did want to catch a few others, but it's wet. We're losing the cameraman. We're losing the camera. So all that remains to say is thank you so much for joining us for Quick 60 at Mallory Park. And we'll see you again next year when they do it all again. Thank you for watching.